All right, hello, this is Crow Ravel. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, today I am hopefully recording a beginner's tutorial guide to beating FTL. Uh, this will be just with a traditional weapon ship. This will also be done on easy mode. Um, I hope to do my best to... <laughs> I was looking at the right numbers here. Um, to not overwhelm people with information, like focus on things like crew kills or stuff, but just like the basic tenets of FTL that you need to hopefully consistently win on your own. All right, so let's go ahead, fire up a new game. We'll go to easy mode. Advanced Edition enabled and start with the basic ship, the Kestrel. Uh, so the Kestrel A is a fairly solid ship. It has incredibly strong weapons. Uh, Burst Laser 2 is pretty much the best purchasable weapon in game uh, because it has excellent timing, a good number of projectiles for a very low power requirement. Uh, also Artemis is an excellent missile weapon. The ability to go through five shields to do two damage for a single power is incredibly strong. Now, um, the crew isn't amazing. I mean, you at least get three of them, and they're humans who are not particularly good nor particularly bad at anything. So there's not, like, weaknesses per se, but there's also not really strengths other than that you can throw them anywhere. And the game was nice enough to start our crew in the correct positions that we want them to be in. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's do a little talk about positioning a crew. So pilot's pretty important. Um, pilots help control our level of evasion. If we don't have a pilot, then we have no evasion. We also can't jump if there's not a pilot. And if we don't have anybody in piloting, then our FTL isn't charging in a given jump. And now we all see that uh, crew members have certain levels of skills. Now humans actually take the least amount of experience to level up. It's not a particularly important aspect, but it is what it is. So they currently are giving plus five to our evasion. Again, if we didn't even have anybody in piloting, currently there wouldn't be any evasion. So it's possible to train this up and we get a plus 10 bonus. So that we're more likely to dodge enemy projectiles. Now, we also have the same thing essentially for engines. Both of these skills, uh, you can gain experience by just evading enemy shots that naturally happen throughout the plane of the game. Hopefully, hopefully not everything just hits. Um, so similar process are in that the more training that this individual has, the better the engines to a maximum of 10. So you can get some, if you're able to train them up, essentially you get two free engines in terms of overall evasion. Um, it is important to note that engines uh, training is also what helps to make your FTL charge faster. So it's how you are able to run away from fights if a fight is particularly bad. Uh, now we have our, our third crew member, they're currently in weapons. So weapons provides us 10% faster charge rate. Uh, I think it gets up to 20%. Uh, so this is, and occurs every single time we just fire a weapon. So we fire the burst laser, it's one uh, experience point per firing, it's not every single shot. Uh, the ship had an artillery that also actually adds to that. Uh, this is, uh, the reason this is kind of important to train is like if your opponent has equal weapons to you, then your weapons will actually be able to fire faster. And that gives you the opportunity to damage their ship before they are able to hurt you. And that also kind of explains what those particular systems do. Now, let's kind of uh, do a tour of the ship and explain the rest of it. Th these are doors. Now, the door system, you know, actually changes once we put a crew member into that room. That's because it's a manned room, which is signified by any of these systems that has, like, a little person above it. We have to have it powered. Um, so the door system is pretty great. It, it's, um, it's actually kind of important. So the door system is what connects individual rooms to other rooms in the ship, and it's how we control uh, venting on our ship if we need to vent, which can help to deal with borders or help put out fires. Now, in a situation with borders, um, if they're level one doors, these orange doors, they'll just be able to move freely throughout the ship, and if we get into a boarding situation, we'll get to that in more detail. Um, but if we have at least a crew member here, these level one doors, which we also can upgrade, 
Uh, then they have to punch down the doors first. The higher the doors, the more it's going to take them to get through. Then we also have these sensors. So the sensors let you peer into the enemy ship and you can get some information as well as see what's on your own ship. So at this level, you just get to see what's on your ship. If we put a crew member in there, we get level two, which lets us see the uh, enemy ship, what's inside theirs. So we get to see their crew, which can be useful if you have like boarding and a uh, teleporter and you want to know what your situation you're about to get yourself into. Um, at level three, you actually get to see their weapons charge and in four, you get to see how their power is allocated. All right, med bay. So med bay is where you go to heal. If it's on, then your crew, if they are low on health, you can bring them in here, and they start healing. You get to see a nice little green animation. Now, they don't actually have to be sitting in the room. You can have them moving back and forth if you need to. If you have to have, like, heal a bunch more people than this room uh, allocates for, typically. But that's it. It heals. Uh, then we have the shield room. So the shield room is this lovely little bubble we have here. Um, you only get improvements every two bars you put into it. So every two upgrades increases shield bubbles to a maximum of four. Uh, now shields will absorb most projectiles, uh, the exception being that it can't absorb missiles. Some weapons will actually have piercing. Uh, missiles have uh, level five piercing. So even if you had five shields, again, you yourself cannot have that. Um, missiles will just go through that and hit whatever system. Otherwise, at these, uh, this is one of your top defensive systems and just absorbing projectiles from enemy ships. And uh, the manning bonus from this particular system is that the shield charges faster. So the amount of time it takes for this bar to fill up, that's what it gains you. Uh, the last system on the ship, we'll just talk about quickly, is the oxygen. Um, that's why there's air in the ship. If the oxygen is turned off, your O2 will start dri dropping. If you vent, it drops even faster. Now... Uh, a lot of times, particularly top-level players, they will not have this powered on during fights using the reactor somebody somewhere else because they're trying to save up as much money as possible when going into a store. Uh, oxygen is kind of... it's kind of liquid because if you do open up all the doors, it, it does take oxygen from the higher-level rooms and it enters into the least um, O2-filled room, so it actually can supercharge them getting back to normal faster. Well, these are little things you'll want to learn and understand as you progress in the game. All right, so here's your hull. Your hull is at 30. Once your hull is gone, that's the game. Or if all your crew die and you have no means of getting them back via a clone bay, uh, that is the game. You lose, the rebels win. Uh, so yeah, again, we talked about shields. Here's your fuel. You need fuels to make a jump from one beacon to another. So just from there to there. And it's also used occasionally to trade with other ships. They'll ask for the resource. It also takes a fuel to use this exit beacon and jump to the subsequent sector. So always make sure that you have enough fuel for that. Uh, here are our missiles. These are what allow our missile weapons to fire. Once you run out of those, you no longer can use your missile weapons. And then we have drone parts. Uh, this is used for two different systems. One is drone control, the other is hacking. Those systems, again, cease to function if you do not have the required drone parts. Um, the only exception being is if uh, you have drones on your own ship, like anti-personnel. Um, as soon as you de deploy them, they're just on your ship and you can just power them on and off and they'll stick with you every single jump. Uh, but if they get destroyed, it will require another drone part to deploy them. Everything else will, every time they are destroyed or every beacon jump, you have to begin again. Now, um, what else, what else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's your upgrades. Now, if you're in a hazard, you can't upgrade your ship, or if you're in the middle of a fight. Elsewise, you spend scrap, and you get to improve your systems. How you spend scrap is incredibly important. You have to spend scrap to keep your ship up to date because the enemies will get progressively harder. And you want to find a balance between the offense that's strong enough to defeat your enemy ships and defense so that they can't kill you. Um, in a average run of FTL, you're going to be running across 35, 45 ship battles, um, 100 or so beacons. So outliers, like low percentage events, are 
they're going to occur. It, it, it's almost statistically likely that they will happen. You're like, oh, there's only a 1% chance like all these shots are going to land. Yeah, they're all going to land at some point. So those are things you have to play around, uh, play around with. Uh, here's your crew, so you can go ahead and rename them if you wish. You can also dismiss them from here if you're bringing some new crew on board. And then this lets you show where your weapons are. If you had a drone system, it'd be here. Augments are slotted into here. You get to max out at three. Any additional augment you'll have to choose, unless that augment doesn't stack, then it auto sells for like 25 scrap. And then here's your cargo hold for extra drones or weapons. All right, so uh, let's now look at sector layout. This is a bit of a skill, it's a bit of an art, shall we say, and that is plotting your way through a sector. Um, you really have to fight off the urge to get to this exit beacon as fast as you can. This is, uh, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Each beacon you visit is a chance to generate money. That money will go to your ship and make your ship stronger. By going to the exit, you're essentially shooting yourself in the foot. You're making it harder for you to get the systems that you need online. Um, and part of the sec of mapping out a sector is understanding how sectors work and particularly in regards to stores. So this is the early civilian sector. Civilian sector one has one to two stores. It's normally a really good idea to be able to f see every adjacent beacon. So if I go to this beacon here, I get to see like seven different beacons. Also, I know that stores don't spawn in these nebula beacons. So if I was really keen on finding a store, I, I would choose this path here. One, two, three, maybe four, five, six. But that would like cut out this section because this beacon is a little bit annoying. So we can go like one, two, three. And that also, we can see that beacon, I guess. That picks up that beacon four five six seven eight and so that way we're missing those two beacons sometimes you're not going to be able to see all the adjacent beacons and again the reason you want to know where stores generally are is a because you may want to buy some stuff and b you may take a ton of damage and you might need to repair and if you're properly routing sectors, you can have a good idea of like, all right, well, I haven't seen any stores and there's two beacons left. So I now know that these beacons are in fact going to be stores and I can plan accordingly. Um, some jumps will look like they should connect and they don't. That's another reason why you actually want to just drag your mouse over all the points to make sure the beacons connect like you think they do. Uh, nothing is worse than getting below the Rebel Pursuit, which we'll talk about once it finally decides to show up, which is about three jumps into the sector. Um, as far as beacons, um, they're currently unmarked. If they have a store distress, they'll let us know so. Uh, we can get more information if we get long range scanners or a map that'll actually show us what a map will tell, show you what all the beacons have, like if they have a ship or a hazard. Uh, long range scanners will show you what adjacent beacons have. Um, let's talk about a little bit of just about nebulas. So nebulas are interesting. Uh, your sensors don't work in nebulas. That's one downside to them. They have special events that are tied specifically to those as well, as well as a hazard called ion storms. Um, but they reduce how far the fleet is able to catch up to you. So in normal non nebula sectors, these will reduce the fleet pursuit by half. If you are in an uncharted nebula or a slug controlled nebula, so like home nebula, uh, then it's like a 20% reduction. Now, before we get started, uh, easy mode is nice enough to start us with 30 scraps. So let's go ahead and upgrade shields. This is a fantastic use of money. Like I said, our weapons are already really strong. So we're probably just going to keep that as is for most of the sector. Sector or two. I'm pretty happy with the weapons for at least two sectors. Um, what this does is this creates a buffer point. That means that this system is able to take one damage and still function. So we don't get an additional bubble, but it just means that this uh, system here is more durable. And uh, like this is often a strategy in FTL is to upgrade your shields as fast as possible. All right, let's go ahead. All right, pause. All right, so dialogue here. Uh, you will eventually learn what events are. 
what they do, what they entail uh, as you progress. You can also look them up in the wiki. So if we attack the rebels, we'll actually get option two at a later point uh, after the battle is over. And of course, we're going to attack the rebels because we're at full hull and we want more money. And that's how you get money by attacking the enemy ships. Okay. So here we are. We're at our first fight. It's important. <laughs> Probably going to use the word important a whole lot. It's important to learn what the weapons are and how to read a fight. Okay. So this is a basic laser and this is a mini beam. So this will go, this will take down a shield bubble and then this will do one damage over a, a small area of rooms. It's about, eh, it's a bit, a line about that long in length, but it can easily hit three to four rooms. So it's a pretty high damaging weapon. Now, even though the fight hasn't started, we have a ton of information. Like I said, we know what their weapons are. We know what their shields are. We know what, how much health they have. And in fact, down here, you can actually see all their systems. So oxygen, piloting, shields, engines, weapons. So they don't have a teleporter, which is pretty common. They also don't have a med bay. So let's go ahead and unpause the fight. So this is gonna take about 10 seconds to charge. This is 11. These actually time pretty well, unfortunately. So this will most likely take down our shield and then we'll take uh, this mini beam of damage. I'm gonna go ahead and put burst laser into slot one. It actually changes on our ship here. You can see as we do that. So that means if this mini beam does hit us in weapons, the burst laser is still live. And what we want to target on enemy ships more times than not is in fact their weapon system. Once we break their weapon system, they're unable to hurt us. So this is the direct route often for the safest fight. And that's really what you want. You want safe fights. You want, if you're not taking damage, then you don't need to repair hull. If you're not taking damage, then all your systems are operating at their maximum functionality. Now, we have this Artemis missile, and we're actually not going to use it in this fight if we don't have to. Uh, the reason being is that it's 11 second charge time. These weapons will probably fire before it even lands, so it actually doesn't make much of a difference here. All right, so we'll just let it go. All right, there's the mini beam. All right, we dealt one damage. So the mini beam's offline, this is online. One shield, we're completely safe. So our crew member is now currently doing repairs. While they're doing repairs, um, they're kind of distracted. They're not considered being on their system anymore. You see, we lose the person over at the top here. So we lose evasion on top of the evasion from the system being damaged and they're just going to fix it. it takes about 12 seconds for that to happen. I like the idea of being thorough, so let's hit them in the weapons one more time, because they're eventually going to repair this. Notice that the system is orange. When a system is completely uh, broken down, it, it, it'll appear red to us. All right, that's fine. Now, there's somebody probably in this room already doing repairs. We can go ahead and actually take a purview of this. Preview. Yeah. So this, they are just continuously repairing in this room until it's completely fixed and they'll do whatever their job is, which may be in this room. So sometimes, particularly if they have like damaging weapons, it's best to wait for them to repair, then break that system again. Because elsewise, if, particularly if it's something like Alita, which is a very fast my, firing missile, you'll hit their system, which is already down, then suddenly that Lido's back up and it's able to actually fire before you can retaliate. But this is a pretty safe fight, so we're not worried about that. Wow, pretty good dodge, considering uh, an easy mode. They don't have anybody in engines. Now, we still want to keep this charged in case they decide to run away. Rebel ships uh, have been known to do such a thing. There we go. Now, you may be saying, oh, well, aren't you losing some training? You can never dodge beams. They hit 100% of the time, so I'm actually not losing any training at all. Nice, we got a kill. So, just a quick uh, crew or weapons deal essentially 15 times their base damage to uh, enemy crew, relatively speaking. There's a few exceptions. So, if you do like seven damage to a, sh to a crew member, they're going to die, at least for a human. Hmm. And uh, there's a lot of downtime in FTL. That's something you're gonna have to get used to. 
All right, so we get 13 bucks. Steal the supplies. So steal the supplies has multiple outcomes. One is that we just get nothing. Um, another one is that we take some damage and get nothing else. Um, the other one is that we uh, we get some stuff. So uh, there's no way to like force it to do one thing or the other. So you just have to be aware of the possibility that some outcomes are negative. And you always have to look at a decision as, am I okay with the negative outcome? Which is just a couple of whole points of damage, which I'm fine with because I have plenty of whole. All right, we get nothing, but we're still the good people. All right, there's no other upgrades. Next level of shields is 23 scrap. We're not actually looking for a store right now, so I'm going to slow up a little bit. Because I want to spend money uh, on my ship before we get there. All right, so we got a heavy laser one and a mini beam. What's interesting about this is this is one of the few ship where putting somebody in shields is actually beneficial. Our shields will charge up enough that um, we'll save some of the damage from this mini beam. And again, we'll target their room uh, with a weapon system. And again, really not gonna use it. Okay, we got a dodge, so we're just safe. All right, and the human's doing repairs. So there, there's, uh, there's information you can gain, even though like we can't see their ship. Like we saw their doors moving. That's how we know where their crew went. So we know that the shield's crew went here to do repairs. But we also know that it's only like normal damage. There's a chance we cause fires. If we had caused a fire, another crew member would go to assist. So now that the weapons are offline and we're safe for a while, let's go ahead and crack shields. All right, doesn't seem like they have a buffer point and now their pilot went to do shield repair. This is normally how I like a tick, uh, to uh, take ships apart, hit them in their weapons so they can't hurt us and then you hit them in their shields. Particularly a ship with two crew, that means that the pilot's over here, they have another crew here, so their evasion is garbage. Fortunately, it's an NG, so they're gonna fix it pretty quickly. So let's knock the weapons down again. And we have our first offer. Normally, if they're just giving you, like, if they have, like, an item, an augment, a weapon, a drone, whatever, that's an auto-accept. Uh, that's not, it's going to 99% of the time be worth more money than um, just taking the, the normal kill offer or uh, the normal reward you get for just destroying the ship. Um, this is sort of interesting. They're offering us five missiles, two drone parts, and 11 scrap. So 11 scrap would get us to our second shield bubble at 30 scrap. Drone parts, I like drone parts because I eventually would like to get hacking and they're about eight scrap a piece. And they're also giving me five missiles which is a decent amount of missiles. Now, I know we haven't used any missiles, but there's always a possibility that we don't find another weapon in the early sector, uh, just because maybe we hit the store early, we don't get enough money for it, or we go to stores and they just don't have weapons. It's a possibility. Um, since I'm on easy mode, I'm pretty okay taking this. Um, I'm gonna generate a bunch of scrap anyways in this sector. Um, and I'd rather just make sure that my Artemis missile is good for longer. So we'll go ahead and we'll just say yes. If you said no, I'm just going for money. That's totally fine. Acceptable. Not, it's not always a guarantee on like there, that there's one correct decision and one decision that's wrong. So with that upgrade, we now have upgraded shields. And you note that we did those upgrades without buying reactor. Um... You don't always need to do everything together. You don't need to like, okay, well, I'm not getting any benefit unless I'm able to completely get the system online. While we didn't get to see it, by having a buffer point in the shield system, we do have a benefit. And now we actually have two buffer points in the shield system. So it now can take even more abuse. But what we're really gonna do is we're just gonna distribute some power. We're gonna turn off the Artemis and we're gonna lower one of our engines. These two shields are gonna keep us exceedingly safe. And we'll learn uh, some fun things about power management. Um, again, don't want to push too far ahead into the sector. All right, become a pirate ship in hot pursuit of an unidentified ship. 
So, if you have a, an event that has an unidentified ship or whatever that they're also in pursuit of, there's a chance of double rewards. It's not guaranteed, but sometimes you get two different rewards, which is really fantastic. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try to be a hero, there's a, but there's also a possibility you get absolutely nothing. So that's the thing to consider if they're offering you a bribe, like, hey, I got a chance at double rewards. Now, we see that they have two basic lasers. It means we're completely safe in this fight with our two shields. So uh, we're going to try to be a hero. Now they're going to turn our weapons on us. If you want to, we can take a look into their ship and see what they have. Okay, they got rocks and some humans. Now, another option you can do in this particular fight is we could just sit here. We could sit here and uh, take these completely safe shots, and eventually we'll actually train up our engine so we're fully trained. Uh, we can just farm that experience. Here, let's uh, go ahead and increase it. Now, I'm very used to this strategy of turning off oxygen for fights. Uh, if you're not comfortable for that, uh, you can buy a reactor. But it's a it's a it's a minor thing that I think is really important to get used to. That you can just operate like with less reactor. So that means we're saving on potential scrap. Now, you're not in trouble until your oxygen gets to five percent. That's when your crew actually start taking damage. The fight shouldn't last that long. So we're totally okay here. But because we're not going to take any damage here. We're going to go ahead and shoot them. Now, we don't even have to hit the weapons. Again, we're safe. And if you want to be really good about it, you only have to turn on the... Uh, because we're not trying to run from this fight, you only need to turn it on for the hit. There we go. We got a dodge. And then you pause the game and put it back. All right. Let's go ahead and hit piloting. So that's going to lower their dodge. Uh, I don't know. I can't introduce this to you. It's fine. It's the idea. It's known as the micro pause. So you actually have two pause buttons. One is your middle mouse button, and the other one is space bar. And what that does, I can kind of show you so you have something moving, is like if we were using space bar, we have some decent control. Four fuel, six missiles, 11 scrap. Uh, this is a pretty nice offer, right? Um, again, if we were low on fuel... Absolutely, we take this. If we are low on missiles, again, absolutely, we take this. We have a chance of double rewards, not guaranteed. Um, but I already got five missiles earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and reject this offer for the time being. Um, as I was saying, like, pausing with, like, a space bar, you, you can do decently. But if you're using the two, um, the middle mouse button, and alternating between the two, you can get just a few frames of movement. Um, and what that can be particularly useful for if you're in a super desperate situation in terms of power management is we can really slow it down and then we can go like, all right, so this shot is probably going to land here. Again, we're safe. But if I needed more evasion, we could just depower the weapons for a few frames and then go ahead and power it back up. That's high-end micro. Again, you probably don't need to do it. I just figure for... It's... It's a pretty decent thing to go ahead and learn ASAP. Um, giving yourself that amount of power of microing is really beneficial. All right, we'll try and take down the piloting. GG's. All right, 29 scrap. Way more scrap than what they were offering us with their other stuff, so that's fine. All right, and yep, yeah, they jumped away because of jerks. So... Um, I would be completely comfortable running the ship as this and doing a bunch of power microing. That's what I'm okay with, but we're on easy. We're learning. So let's go ahead and just buy a reactor. There we go. We can make up for it later. One, two, three. So now we get to see that here's the, uh, the rebel pursuit, right? So here's where it is now. And here's where it's going to be after we jump. They're going to make this jump as well. And you notice that these beacons are flashing red. So these are considered dives. And these fights are nasty. They will involve having to fight a rebel elite, which is going to be the strongest ship you can face in the sector. Um, they normally have more shields. They normally have more weapons. In general, it's best to avoid them. Now, I can't remember if ASBs are part of easy mode or not for dives. So we're just going to avoid it for the time being. 
But there is sometimes benefits to diving, particularly if it allows you to um, visit like more beacons and you have a lot of safety during the dive. Uh, sure, I'll offer my assistance, attempt to scan the planet, continue. Hey, we got a fight out of it. All right, so this system has drone control and we got a mini beam. So as long as we have one shield up, we're good for the mini beam. If it's not a combat one, we're safe. It's a combat one, we're not safe. That's fine. We can go ahead and bring up the Artemis missile for backup and all of our systems that we need right now are functioning. Again, you don't need to power your med bay if there's nobody in it. Most of the time you're only gonna do it like when a fight is over. So we'd have two options. We can crack their weapons or we can tr crack their drone control. I'm actually gonna go weapons here. Um, the reason being is uh, these, this particular ship, maybe not an easy, but this ship uh, could have uh, three power and drones. So one shot hits shields, they dodge one, one shot hits here, and this thing's still active. But it's very rare do they have a buffer point in their weapons. Yep, we see we got that dodge that we said. So actually, we can go ahead and shift and bring our oxygen back online because our two shields are more than capable of dealing with this. Now we're going to go ahead and hit their drones. All right, they didn't have a buffer point. That's fine. So now this is offline. We're okay as long as we have one shield. If you wanted to, you could do this. You could wait until they get repaired before you bring up a second shield bubble if you just went more evasion to run away. These are the little micro things you can do. Again, you don't have to. Like, if you were doing this the whole fight, you're probably going to be fine. All right, so we got one level of repair. Now, a concern we might have, and the reason we are charging the Artemis, is enemy ships like to run away. If they're running away at the start of the fight, I want to say it's 45 seconds... And no matter how much damage you do to their engines or piloting, if they're not completely offline, their FTL is charging at the same rate. But some ships like to run after a fight has already progressed. Oh my gosh, this offer is terrible. Two missiles, drone part, 11 scrap? No. And the amount of time for them to run away from that is, I think it's less than 20 seconds. So this Artemis is just sitting here like, if you need me, I'm there for you. Oh, they got lots of repairs done. You're going to make mistakes. FTL runs are long. They require a lot of different decisions. So mistakes are common. They're going to happen. Try to learn from them. Try not to repeat them. But also don't, don't beat yourself up if you make an error along the way. It happens to everybody. Wow. 10 scrap and a free halberd beam. Uh, okay. Well, that's interesting. So it's a really amazing weapon that we just picked up. Hmm. See, I kind of want to sell it because it's so incredibly powerful that it's like, oh, well, of course you won this run because you picked up a halberd beam. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now... So some people have like an overlay to help them deal with jumps, Fleet Pursuit Indicator, it's a mod. Uh, another thing you can do is eventually you kind of just estimate. Uh, but one thing you also can do is these little dash marks give you a general idea of Fleet Pursuit. So every uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, every six dashes parallel like so, that is the length of a uh, Fleet Pursuit jump. So you can go like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and be like, okay, so here's one, two, three jumps before this is taken, but probably jump four, it gets overrun. That can help you learn how to plan sectors accordingly. So one, two, three, we can be here in three jumps. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Sure. <laughs> All right, they got a missile and they have drone control. Uh, that's fine. Okay, it's just a beam drone. So the beam drone only needs one missile. Oh, I'm sorry. The beam drone only needs one shield, even if this hits us in the shield system. Um, we have those two buffer points, so it'll be fine in dealing with this missile. I want to try and take this missile offline first. Now it should be a Leto. Yeah. Often ships with drone control, I think, can only max out at having a Leto missile. They are ne almost never paired with an Artemis as well. All right, so that looks like it's going to hit us in the weapons, which means our Artemis is going to go offline. 
So we could try and fire it pre uh, early, or we'll just let the system go down. Oh no! Nice! Fooled me. Now, when a weapon is determined to hit you is actually based on two different areas. If your shield bubble is up, it'll be when it crosses the shield threshold. And if you don't have a shield bubble up, it's pretty much the room that it's going to impact. All right. Since we're completely safe, let's go ahead. I like to take down evasion on auto ships. They often have pretty high dodge because they have so few systems. In fact, uh, apparently the ones that are like the layouts that are all the connected rooms are the highest evading ships in the game. Now, auto ships slowly repair all their systems at the same time. I think it's about at the, the speed of a one third of a human. So it can take a while. If you are able to cause a breach, uh, that system is just completely busted because the AI can't repair the breach. And without the breach repaired, it's unable to do anything else. All right, so we'll take our 19 bucks and we'll just keep going. One, two, three, distress. Well, like I said, I want to be here in two jumps. I don't have, like, a lot of blue options other than trading fuel. Humans just don't come with many. So, I'm not really keen on it. Oh, see, mistake. I should have had both my shields up before I got into this fight. If they have a combat drone one, they're going to really be suppressing my shields. Okay. Well, it's fortunately, it's just two beam drones. A beam drone and a mini beam. So, as long as we have one shield up, we're completely safe. So, we're going to want to take it down its piloting. So here we see the enemy's FTL is charging. Like I said, it's about 40 or so seconds before they run away, unless we're able to completely break either engines or piloting. I kind of like to go piloting, particularly for these ships, because their piloting maxes out at, like, level 3. In the early sector, they can also have level 3. About it. They can max out at, like, level 3 engines. Normally, they're only going to have, like, 1-2 piloting. Good. Okay. That's exactly what they have. So, because we have a lot of time before they do repair here over in the engines, we're going to go ahead and crack their shields. Now, it may not look like it, but every single one of these systems on the auto ship has that man bonus that we talked about that we get from our crew. Um, I guess that's how the AI is able to fly ships without crew in them. And all those other systems. So damage those systems make them lose that bonus, but that means they will fire, like I said, as if they had somebody on crew doing that. Hey, it's a store. All right, we're going to a store. We have 80 scrap. We could potentially sell the halberd, which is a decent amount of money to go to a store. When you're going to, if you before you jump to a store, you always have to decide, like, how much scrap you need to go to that store, like, what it is that you are actually trying to buy. Um, sometimes you just need fuel, a couple repairs, so that's fine. Um, just trying to stay alive, but if you're looking for, you know, expensive stuff, it's, it takes a lot of money. 80 scrap will buy you pretty much every single weapon in the game. It also buy you a couple systems that are interesting, so let's go with that. Wow, this door is absolutely loaded. Okay. <laughs> this is so gross. Like, if I just had those weapons, I'd win. Um, yeah, hacking is uh, a really nice system. Uh, and then they also have long-range scanners, which is uh, a, one of the best augments in the game. So, I think it's important to take time at a store. It's really easy to just hop in the store and go, Oh my gosh, long-range scanners, insta-buy. You always are supposed to buy those. Burst laser 2, absolutely, I need that. Um... You really should just make sure you're assessing what it is that your ship needs and what in the store best addresses those needs. Early on in FTL, about the best thing I can find at a store is a weapon. Okay? Um, Burst Laser 2 is one of the best purchasable weapons in the game. I'm pretty close to even getting it online. I only need to buy one more upgrade to my weapons to get that to go. Halber Beam takes a lot more. So, like, to get the... Uh, Let's see, like, so it's 35 scrap plus 20 scrap. That's going to get me the uh, burst two online plus the 80 scrap for it. So I'm, you know, 55 scrap away from getting that online. But if we were talking about the halberd beam to get that online by itself, 
Well, that's 35. I can't even get the next point, which is another 50. I'm five scrap from, short from that. So, yeah. Like, now we're very far away from getting that online by comparison. All oh, right. Oh, I, I think I did two power and I should have done one power. Anyways, um, like finding another weapon is incredibly strong. Uh, like I said, you just have more shots. It's what it's way easier to overwhelm your enemies because they're going to have evasion. So like burst laser here is fine. Yeah. Uh, let's say this was some garbage weapon or something else. Piping would also be pretty acceptable pickup here. Um, beam weapons are general pretty strong. You only normally want one on your ship. There's a couple exceptions, but generally you just want like a beam weapon on your ship. So you like knock down their shields and then this does a lot of damage for a small amount of power. A lot of hull damage. Not a lot of damage to a specific system. Um, but yeah, like so either of these I think would be fine purchases in this spot because again, they're both two powered. Uh, which makes them very easy to get online. They're fairly affordable. While this one looks affordable, the three power is a lot. Um, you're gonna have to upgrade your weapons more. It's gonna take a longer time to get online. Um, FTL is that balance of maintaining the ability to win now, as well as win eventually in the future. So here, for me, I don't, I'm not gonna struggle too much on just picking up this burst laser. And we're not gonna do anything else. We could sell the halberd beam here, if you wanted to, to just get the money and get the burst laser online, if that would make you feel more comfortable. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that. Uh, normally, I don't sell weapons. It's a good idea to generally not sell weapons. But uh, we'll just take this for the money instead of it being just a really good weapon. Just zip it out right out the door. And now we only need like three more scrap to get this other burst laser online. It's fine. Next beacon. Oh, you know what I should have done? Bought fuel. That's bad. I should have definitely bought fuel there. I normally like to have 14 fuel. Um, all right, so normally I ignore this. Uh, we can get some fuel here, or we can just, like, fuel gets lost, or we have, like, a coin flip to get a fight. I would like to have a fight. Good. All right, heavy laser, uh, anti-drone drone, so we're completely safe here for this fight. Can't take any damage. Wow, triple NGs and a repair bot. So this ship is not gonna, like they're gonna fix damage incredibly fast. Again, know what drones are? Know that uh, this isn't a defense drone. It's not a DD-1 or a DD-2. So it's not gonna shoot down our missiles. Though our missiles and our other projectiles can go ahead and land in, in it. Yeah, we're gonna just go down to one shield. It's fine. We might. I kind of want to just use a missile to try and speed this up if possible. All right. So our shots will land. Their engines are offline. Now I'll go after their shields. Yeah, they're running. That's not too surprising. These kinds of ships like to run. Uh, nice. The FTL is delayed because the engines are offline. And yeah, it's already charging. Good. Uh, let's finish them off. Like I said, NG, so an NG crew member repairs at two times speed. So essentially they have six crew repairing plus a repair bot, which also does that. So they essentially have eight crew repairing all their systems. It would not, it's not gonna take them very long to fix anything. All right, we'll get 22 bucks. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and upgrade our weapons. That was kind of a plan that we had. Let's stick with it. Um, all right, we can surrender our crew to slavers. We'll never surrender our crew to slavers. Uh, unless like you think the ship is going to kill you, don't surrender your crew to slavers. It's not nice. Uh, two basic lasers were completely safe in this fight. Now, these ships also actually have a tendency to um, give you crew as a reward. Like, it may just be like, hey, here's an extra crew member. If you're on a ship that's desperate for crew, that's an option you can go with. Uh, you don't have to. Um, this is actually an interesting ship. We could try to get an auto kill on it, or we could try to get for a crew kill here, but 
I'm not like that concerned with crew kill stuff right now. So let's talk about shooting your weapons. It's really easy because these weapons are exactly the same. So they time with each other, but you normal, you want to fire in a volley, right? Like I fire this one, let a couple shots hit, let their shields recover, then fire the next one. That shield bubble is absorbing another shot, but we fire them at the same time. We can take down the shot and now it's five to an unprotected system. There we go. Now you notice I almost never use auto fire. Um, I think situations are often in flux, so it's not the best policy to like use auto fire. It's easy to forget and then weapons do things that you weren't expecting them to do. 28 bucks. All right, let's go ahead and buy another reactor. And we can now have dual burst laser tubes. Excellent. All right, let's go to the exit. So exit beacons, there's always something unless it's in a nebula. So there's always going to be some event here. Maybe garbage event, but there's always going to be something here. Uh, we can sell missiles. This is actually a really cool event in that no matter what difficulty, these are the uh, options. And harder modes, you get a lot less money. So like 45 scrap for 50 missiles is pretty good. Um, considering the weapons we now have, I'm totally okay giving up 15 missiles. Like we're not very reliant on the Artemis right now. So we'll just take a huge chunk of money. Nope, we could have got an extra beacon if we uh, routed the sector going this way. But once we are, we saw the store here, like I prioritize going to the store to get a weapon. So yeah, we lost a jump, but we picked up a really solid weapon. All right, next thing, sector, determining sectors, how we're going to get through this. Also, uh, this reminds me, my colors might look different. That's just because I have colorblind mode on. All right, so green sectors can be civilian, NG, or Zoltan. I guess that's just to break up the red sectors being all hostile, because Zoltan sector is very hostile. Um, these sectors, that mean, green sectors always have two to three stores. Uh, red sectors are considered hostile sectors, so these are pirates, rebels, mantis, uh, rocks, and even abandoned sectors, which are Lanius. These, that means those sectors can have like one to two stores. Normally they'll have more fights. Nebula sectors, we already saw what nebula beacons look like. Uh, there's two kinds, there's uncharted and there's slug. Uh, in my opinion, uncharted nebulas are some of the worst sectors in the game, if not the worst sector in the game. They have a lot of empty jumps in them. Uh, they can have as few as one store. When possible, try to avoid them. Now, apparently slug sectors only start showing up in sector four. So that's also going to be uh, abandoned or uh, uncharted as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this path. We've got the NG sector, two to three stores. Typically not a lot of fights, which is okay. Uh, so these are normally kind of chill sectors to go to to like buy some stuff, get some freebies maybe. Which, hey, I'm totally cool with freebies. Wow. Okay, so that's a pretty forward exit location, right? Like, it could be over here. That'd be nice, but it's pretty smushed up there. Um, so let's, again, make sure beacons connect like we think they are. One, two, three, four, five. Gives us a decent sector layout. Uh, we do want to go to a store. Uh, so, again, I need to buy some fuel because I didn't do that previously. Hi there, bomb and a heavy laser. Also the event that apparently is lowering our engines. Okay. Well, we can keep everything online as is. So again, let's just target their weapons. Get those offline as fast as possible. So we're safe. Nice. Close to being able to fire that. We'll go ahead and just take out piloting. Uh, as soon as their piloting goes down, then the rest of our shots will land, so this will probably end the fight very quickly. Yeah, our weapons are very powerful right now. Three fuel, 25 scrap. Now, a thing you should be noting when playing the game is what the enemies are like. 
So Sector 1, all the enemies maxed out at one shield. I'm pretty sure they're going to max out at one shield in this Sector 2, and it's going to be often that that's what they have in Sector 3. So you're going to want your weapons to be able to deal with that, and most starting weapons will be able to do so. But as far as, like, how should you build your weapons or your loadouts, like... Yeah, you may be thinking, hey, 50 scrap, we can get that Artemis online and our weapons are just super bonkers strong. I, I really don't think I need to be able to do that kind of damage. Instead, I want that, that scrap to buy something at a store. Um, assistance requested danger. Sure, we'll move in to assist. All right, got another missile and basic laser here. Go ahead, target their weapons. Want to dodge at max. We can take the power from our shield system since this is dealt with by a single shield. All right, again, this is Alito. Um, because it fired before this, we know it's Alito because the missile launchers look exactly the same. Alito's also, uh, if we fire an Artemis, you'll see that it actually has like these wings and a torso. It's a much bigger missile. All right, that was the sound of a breach. Okay, so that means that there's O2 slowly draining from this room. I'm not going to repair this right now. That is not a top concern that I have. All right, now that the weapons are offline, we can go ahead and do that. If you want, you can open up all the rooms so that this has to drain oxygen from the entire ship. Um, it makes it less uh, prone. and It makes it take longer for this room to be completely devoid of oxygen. Again, these two crew members aren't doing anything. It's not like I'm dodging their non-existent shots. So again, pause, assign them to the room, let them do the repair. And uh, again, let's try and just take down piloting and this fight right now. Nice. Every time, while fixing the breach itself doesn't uh, grant experience, um, the repairing the damage from the system will. Uh, 23 scrap, contact the NG. Hey, 16 scrap and an NG. Excellent. That's that's wonderful. NGs uh, have what are known as blue options. We haven't come across any because, like I said, the ship itself doesn't have that many blue options. Going to go ahead and put a crew back. So, as for this crew member, we're going to go ahead and stick them in doors. It's a really good spot to put your fourth crew member in most times. So, now we have those level two doors. So, again, enemies are going to be harder for them to move about our ship. Uh, it also makes fires a little bit more difficult to spread. Now you're like, hey, but don't I get a benefit of with them in shields? It's a kind of minor benefit, and very easily, if there is no borders in a fight, just go ahead and move them to shields. You can also go ahead and pop them to sensors if you want some information for whatever reason. Yeah. So, again, I'm pretty comfortable because we have this overwhelming volley to, like, not spend scrap on things like engines or whatnot. Also, if you took the time to train your crew, then your engines are already levels higher than what they are, should be. But if I had weaker weapon, okay, so we just get a burst laser Mark One. Uh, that's another really fantastic weapon. Two power, two shots. Is it as good as the burst two? No, but it's it's really close. Um, so yeah, this game is essentially given us like if we just kept that the halberd beam in our starting weapons, we would be completely fine. So I'll take the burst. No, it just goes there. Distress Beacon. All right, Distress Beacons. Now, like I said, we have an NG. NGs have a lot of blue options. A lot of them happen in NG sectors. Giant alien spiders, no joke. Okay, so there's a possibility we get a little bit of money from this, but there's also a possibility we just lose a crew member. Do I want to risk a crew member for a little bit of scrap? Like, the amount of scrap isn't going to buy a new crew member. I just got an NG, so it's random. Like, I could just lose my NG over this. More times than not, no. Now, there are some blue options here. If you had, I think, an anti-bio beam or, like, an anti-personnel drone or maybe even a firebomb, uh, it would, like, give you a blue option here that you could use that and essentially just nuke them from space. If you had a clone bay, this is actually kind of safe to risk one of your crew, but we don't, so we're just going to leave them alone. It's fine. You don't need to make money all the time. Store. We have 150 scrap and potentially things to sell if we go to the store. Or we could hop around, increase the money we have before we hit the store. So what should we do? Um, because in part of the sector layout, how we loop this way, even though I know that these two aren't stores... 
Um, like, maybe that's a store and I can't reach it, and that's the last store in the sector. So I could fill up uh, to maximize my value when I go here, and that's probably the best play. Um, if you're looking for, like, more specific things and you want to, like, max out your stores, then you hit it now and try to see more beacons in the sector. It just, it looks like that's really less likely to occur. Like, if we go to this store and it's bad, that these are essentially our last beacons to try and get to the store because we really can't backtrack to these three over here. So let's maximize the money before we get to the store, which looks like one, two, three, four jumps. Now we have to be careful, right? We're like, oh, this is four. That's good. But what about this jump? Is this five? One, two, three, four, five. It's really close. Now we could risk it and know that we can also just hit this jump before we hit the exit. So that's what we're going to do. One, two two three jumps we got a little bit of space so one two three again totally cool to double check all the time particularly if you're not streaming and we'll try and make up a little bit more money before you hit that store uh yep get nothing that's fine Hello there, Pirate Tuco. All right, so they got, you can see the drone control, heavy laser. It's a little bit of dangerous of a fight, unless if this isn't offensive, then it, we're fairly safe. Doesn't look like we're getting boarded. We could take a sneaky peek here, right? We could see, all right, so they have an anti-personnel bot and they got some NGs, so they're pretty good at repairs. Uh, if this is a small bomb, which is pretty likely, I do like to crack their weapons. Small bombs deal two damage and also have a chance tendency to like start fires, which is not fun. All right, so let's go ahead and depower our dodge and bring back our oxygen. If you want, you can go ahead and move the NG here. Again, these crew members aren't doing anything right now. All right, so we got the human doing repair. That's going to be pretty slow. Let's bust their shields. All right, looks like they're trying to run away. All right, so we're still fine against this. It's not going to take them too long for their that to charge, so we're just going to target them at their piloting. Go ahead and move our crew there. So we know, yeah, see, like when we hit our shots to when we're firing it, this is already jumping. It's like 10, 12 seconds. It's not a lot of time. So sometimes like you'll get like some garbage surrender offer, but if you're like, well, they might just jump away, like that's a better option. Okay, so now that we're here, we can really assess it. Like, we can go to the store, and we can clearly go to here. But, we've seen this is a store. It doesn't really matter which one we go to. Let's go ahead and take this one. All right, what do you have? All right, we do have hacking, mind control, clone bay. All right, this is now generally the point where I would love to buy hacking. So I'm going to buy hacking. Um, as far as these systems go, unless specifically I am personally boarding, I never swap between med bay and clone bay. Uh, it's just, it's a whole lot of money. Yeah, there are some benefits about clone bay over med bay. Um, but again, it's like a lot of money to spend to something I don't inherently need. What's great about hacking, and we'll see it because like I said, I'm going to buy this, is it gives us a lot of flexibility and is really able to be abused by players when you know specifically what you're doing it's defensive and offensive um it's pretty much the system you want on every single ship like if some's just some ships you can only buy like one or two systems on it i always want one of those two systems those like i said i almost always want it to be hacking so let's go ahead and get that now, as far as augments go, most augments are very, very situational. If I was somehow stuck on only having Mantis, which have half repairs, or like just completely garbage crew in that regard, fire suppression's kind of interesting. It will help you put out fires, but for 65 scrap, it's probably not worth it. Like just buy a crew member if that's available. 
stealth weapons is actually a pretty interesting augment. I used to not be that big of a fan of it. Um, but if you're using level 1 cloaks, it doesn't have a lot of value. But if you're using high level cloaks, like level 3, it's actually pretty strong. Um, I'm not going to get it now. A, I don't even have that system. And my build doesn't really require me to get it. Did I say A, so I had to come up with, like, a second point? Uh, the other thing is, is, like, it's 50 scrap. Like, I have other things I probably want to spend money on. Emergency respirators, again, is helps with boarding for the most part. Allows your crew to board into enemy ships and punch them down. Clone Bay is probably a better option if you want to go that route. In terms of, like, well, if you're already boarding, Clone Bay has a lot more benefits than picking this up. But different stores, again, maybe you won't see Clone Bay, and it's something worth considering. As for crew, unless I'm a boarding ship or I'm desperately below on crew, I'm almost never buying crew. Um, some people like to buy crew for blue options. I generally think that's not a good idea. Um, there's no guarantee you're actually even going to make back the money that you spent on them. Normally, you want them because they give you benefits by having crew on an extra system, helping you deal with repairs. The bare minimum of crew that I am comfortable with in fighting the flagship is like five so the fact that i'm at four in sector two it's pretty likely i'll just come across another one i really don't want to buy crew now another interesting choice here is mind control mind control is a really is an interesting system like hacking it's it requires a little bit of nuance it's not quite as powerful because if they don't even have crew then you're not going to get a lot out of it in fact you're going to get nothing out of it also, in normal and easy mode, Teleporter has a ton of value, particularly for the flagship fight. It absolutely trivializes the flagship. Um, hard mode, not quite the same. Um, so we could just buy Teleporter uh, later, hopefully, or we could pick up Mind Control now. I wouldn't fault you either way. Uh, if you want to hold out because you just know and understand how absolutely powerful uh, boarding is against the flagship, sure. But I'm going to go ahead and go mind control, uh, kind of show off what it can do. So let's go ahead and get mind control. Repair-wise, I think we're fine. Normally, I'm really comfortable at like 22, 23 hull. Um, if my ship is very bad, like it doesn't have very good defenses, or I screwed up, or intentionally have to dive, then maybe I buy up a little bit more hull, get to 25, 26, knowing that I'm just going to be taking more damage. Um, but like I said, we're at 26 hull, so that's fine. There's no reason to repair up. We do need more fuel. Like I said, I like to have about 14 fuel. Okay, so that's what our ship currently looks like now. Now we're a little bit low on reactor. That's okay. That is what our next purchase will be. So, let's go take this beacon. I just like the flexibility of these systems. All right, attempt to download the store. So, we can just get 50 scrap, and that's it. We don't even have to fight this. So, if you're like, I don't want to deal with it, you can just take the money. Uh, there's a chance we still get money, and we just get a map of the sector. The map isn't particularly valuable since we're already at the end of the sector, but we also get more money for this. Often, not always. 13 bucks. All right, let's still not enough for a reactor. That's fine. Like I said, it is it's it's good just to get these systems out of the way and know that we have something to build in. Um if you're if you're like really 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 uncomfortable with the power level, but like for the most part, like we're not going to we don't really quote unquote need to use them. All right, let's count some dashes. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. So we're good. We'll take this beacon and then hit the exit. Intruder on deck. All right, so a young mantis in a charred uniform teleports onto our deck. We have two options. So this is a coin flip. Um, we get boarded by a mantis and take some damage, or we get a mantis crew member. If you're a boarding ship and you need more boarders, mantis, 1.5 times crew damage, really solid pickup. If you don't really care about the crew and you're also low on hull, this option is better. Um, it's high scrap, high scrap and damage, or essentially the exact same fight where like a Mantis boards your ship and you fight an NG1. But the chances of taking damage are only 33% versus it being a coin flip. 
So I'm probably just going to try and go for the money. I really don't need a Mantis crew member on my ship. 39 bucks. No fight. No. Nice. Let's go ahead and buy two reactor bars. All right. So now see we can power everything by just doing this. Very comfortable doing so. And let's hit the exit. As far as like selling weapons go, you should always be careful about selling weapons. Again, this run has been going exceedingly well. You've gotten more than enough like solid weapons, but sometimes FTL, like I said, it doesn't give you the weapons you want and you just have to make do with the weapons you have. Selling weapons for like lateral or minor improvements is often a really bad idea. You probably can get away with it on normal and easy and you're like, cause you just have so much scrap comparative to hard mode. But it's a really good habit to just be like, all right, like, let's just make do with what I have. It's not, it's not S tier or anything along those lines, but it will get the job done. Um, all right. It seems to have been retrofitted for transport rather than combat and doesn't seem to want to engage your ship. All right. So this particular event, they're always running. And normally it's best to get a crew kill here. So we got about 40 seconds or so. All right, well, guess who didn't put their crew back where they're supposed to be? Oh, and they have an ion intruder. All right, so for this particular fight, it may be a crew kill, but it's also just really beneficial for how we want to play this. We're going to go ahead and hack piloting. Normally, I hack engines, but here we're going. We're going to use a little bit of advanced strats here. We're going to hack piloting. Hopefully this uh, this intruder doesn't land anywhere near my weapons. Okay, here. I don't care about that. We're going to go ahead and mind control the pilot. All right. So mind controlling the pilot means these two crew members, they're going to want to fight. We're going to unlock the doors and get everybody in this room. Get them all up in there. We're going to go ahead and move our NG to here. Now, after we've already established the mind control. But also, we still see inside the room because we've hacked it. All right. So one crew member gets in there, second crew member, and we close it. Once we do that, once we've had this, like we can turn this off and on. Now let's talk about what we can do. So the mind control means this crew member, I can't control what they do, but they're under my influence. So now they, they, they're seen as a bad guy to them and they're fighting to defend it. Hacking lets me control the system. So if I don't have hacking on, again, I'll pop it for a frame. It just lets me see what's inside the room. But once I at least have it powered, I actually get information. So I can see that this the ship currently has 10 points of, or evasion is 10%. All right, that's fine. Let it roll, let it roll, let it roll. We're now gonna shoot our shots here. And we're going to hack. Watch what happens when we hack. It disables or and drains that system. So now it turns their evasion from 10% to zero. All right, and we just dump every single shot into that room. It looks like we killed two crew members and one still left alive with 25 points of health. Uh, it's unfortunate we didn't get a fire there to like try and finish them off, but that's okay. All right, nice. They're trying to get into this room. So, like I said, because we have this crew on doors, it's harder for them to get in the room. Depending on where the iron intruder landed, where this, like, if it if it landed in shields, then we'd have a different concern because then this starts becoming a danger. If it landed weapons, we have a really big concern because it disables our weapons. It just does this pulse of three ion damage and stuns crew as well. Oh, also, let's actually just real briefly, let's talk about ion damage. So you see how there's a three here, there's a four here for our cooldowns. Cooldowns on systems and ion damage are basically indistinguishable as far as the game mechanics go. So this four here means that there's essentially four ion damage and each number is five seconds. So this is essentially three and a half. So this is about like uh so what that's like 17 seconds this is 20 seconds on cooldown and this is about 13 seconds on cooldown so as it goes through like a like a clock like a timer 
it'll go down to two, then one, and then that system will be back under our control. Now, another fun thing about hacking is uh, the repair in this room is now half what it would normally be. That doesn't... Fires and breaches will get repaired the same, or put out the same, but um, normal repairs are actually going to be significantly slower, uh, like 50% slower. And so we're just going to fire these shots here, knowing that this is not going to be repaired anytime soon. One, two, three... There we go, crew kill, and okay, yeah, great. Another top tier weapon, Flak 1. This is so absurd. Um, yeah, that's definitely the most useful. Okay, thank you for that. The boarding bot is destroyed. Now we're gonna have to uh, go ahead and repair our med bay. Well, wait a second though. Let's wait a second. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So now that there's no oxygen in that room, but it's a med bay, if we turn our med bay on, our crew is actually healed at the exact same rate they take asphyxiation damage. See, it's set a flat 99% at level 1. Oh, I didn't save crew positions. That's what I didn't do. Okay. Can't believe we got a flak. Jeez. This, this is a bonkers weapon loadout. Alright, so I believe we're going to the next sector. Because we're just jumping to the next sector... Don't upgrade anything. We're going to the next sector. All right. Well, maybe there's like an early store that you're thinking about checking out first. So we should at least get there beforehand. Again, I don't like Uncharted Nebula. NG Control is fine. NG Space. Okay. Distress Beacon. Insta Store. Um, we do have things we could sell at the store if we wanted to. We don't have to. For the most part, I just want to get money and maybe try and pick up cloaking this sector. It's a bit bold. So again, we're in Sector 3. I would expect the enemies to be a little harder. Um, in hard mode, two shielded ships would be very common. Um, I don't think that's going to quite be the case. Let's go ahead and check out this distress. I have some options. Hi there. Uh, small NG ship under attack by Rebel Fighter. Okay. So, we see they have a flak, that's three projectiles, and that's another, uh, that's a heavy laser one. So, our shields are not quite good enough to deal with this. So, what are we going to do? Uh, this fires at 10 seconds, and this fires at 9 seconds. Ours take 12, so they're faster. What we can do is give ourselves a slight advantage, and we could hack their weapons here. And we're going to go ahead and move our NG crew to here. So last time we just like went straight after evasion because we were completely safe and we also didn't want them to get away. This time now we're going to hack their weapons. So first off, they already lose the bonus here of the, having the crew man, so that already slows down their weapons. We're going to let it charge up a little bit. Not all the way. Correction, we're actually going to let it charge up all the way. So in terms of like hacking, we have two options here. We can just hack it. Or we can try to desync their weapons. I kind of want to desync their weapons. It's playing extra safe, and plus we get to see what that is. It's better to let them charge before you drain them. So because then you buy the time it took to charge. You drain them back down, and then they have to refill up. That buys your weapons the most time to charge. So we're actually going to let this one fire. We'll do a couple little micro pauses. And now we'll hack, because this is one projectile and this is three. See, so that hits our shield, and with this being hacked, we now don't have three projectiles, which buys our time for our shields to recover. We also could have done that, actually had better evasion. Now we'll fire weapons here. Give them a little bit of traveling time. They kind of disappear off our screen, it lets you know they're sort of going there, and we'll go ahead and mind control their pilot. So the mind control pilot means that if they only have level one piloting they lose this pilot they lose all their bonuses and like how we if we have no pilot we have no evasion could happen with them there we go all of our shots land and now the ship is easy prey we can crack their shields 
Now, a level one mind control crew is going to do enough damage to do, like, one damage to a system, unless they get any way interfered with. There we go. Got partial training now. 20 scrap. NG vessel turns out to be very poorly equipped. Uh, this is a all you get, like, you get nothing from this. You get an augment that is not worth the 40 scrap. I give them nothing. There's no morality in space. <laughs> okay. So again, everything is pretty powered. Um, I'm pretty cool with like not just upgrading engines at this point right now. Again, I'm actually operating with more power than I normally do. And our ship is really far ahead of the curve right now. So let's try and maximize money for a store if we get to one. Cloaking is 150 scrap, 40 bucks, sure, store. Okay, so those are the three stores in the sector. So we wanna kinda of come back down this way, maybe hop on those two beacons and then come back away the other way around. Uh, ignore, okay, both times did not get a fight. One, two, and three. One, two, three. One, two, three, and four. All right. Like I said, we're just really hunting for cloaking to kind of finish out our system. Uh, the captain appears on the screen. Strange bug. Can you help in debugging? This is the only blue option for humans. All right. So I was an inhuman. Returned them home. Got Robert Smith. And then there's options. They can look at our engines, which upgrade our engines one level, or we can offer a position on the ship. Let's go ahead and bring them on board. We got Smith. Oh, nice. They're trained in shields. It's a really good place to uh, go ahead and put the Mantis. So these two crew are best at, like, roaming. Because the NG is two times repair speed, you don't want them tied down to a system because if something gets hit, you want to move them quickly to help do that repair. Because essentially it's like sending two humans to go fix something. Um, and again, in dealing with borders, you want the Mantis to deal with borders because it's 1.5 times combat damage, punching them in the face. Uh, there are, there are ideal positions for all crew types somewhere on the ship, um, like rocks and slugs for piloting, you know, Zoltans have some benefits in shields that you can deal with, or you want to put them in a, a room like engines, so they're... The microwing them is a lot easier. Uh, you like you don't put them in subsystems because it, Zoltan crew members have like a bonus reactor uh, that you wouldn't you just wouldn't be gaining the advantage of. But you know, while it's nice, it's not like the most important thing to do. It's not like oh, like you're making a huge mistake if you're not putting the crew in the optimal positions all the time. Yeah, I'm gonna buy six fuel. I'm pretty low. All right, well, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of money going to the store that I was hoping to pick up because we got a crew member and then we bought some fuel, but that's fine. Not everything is, wow, again, really solid weapons. Another burst laser, another charge laser. Um, but not the system we are looking for. Probably could win with that. Um... So ideally, like, those are going to be my final weapons, but I kind of don't want to sell the Artemis right now. Because if we just buy, like, a buffer point in weapons, then the Artemis gets online. And that's, like, a really nice weapon to just add to our collection, so to speak. So instead, what we're going to pick up is, let's take the battery. Buying the battery, it's a subsystem. It gives us temporary power, which is nice. Normally, at, like, it's 35 scrap for that temporary power. If we look at our ship... It's 50 scrap to get two full-time power. So we're saving 15 bucks. Also, it's now out of the item pool. So future stores are more likely to going to have the systems we want. Like I said, cloaking. Okay, let's get back up to that 14 that I like. Now we have 41 bucks. There's really no reason to go to this store now. Now, if we had 150 scrap going to this store... Like, we might have just not bought anything, go to the store and get what we want. But now it's like there's nothing here that I want to buy for 40 bucks. I don't care. Uh, so we'll just go to this beacon instead. All 
all right, basic laser, probably a small bomb. We're pretty safe this fight. Go ahead and move this crew member into here. We shouldn't actually need hacking. We'll just try and get it by with mind control and our burst lasers. It's a little bit risky. This could land on our weapons and take our burst laser offline. But our weapons fire so fast they'll at, at 12 seconds and this at 13 plus our charge time. They'll at least get their projectiles off. We want to mind control them as late as possible so that there's not anybody in piloting. Like one of the crew members could have just moved in here, fought them if we did it too soon. And then they would have some piloting bonus. In hard mode, I would totally be trying to go for a crew kill. But that's not the biggest goal. Again, this is just... Let's get our first victory in FTL. 38 bucks. Let's keep going. One, two... One, two... Three... Maybe four jumps. One, two, three. Seems good. Uh, explain your friend to their offer, or take their surrender offer. Uh, I always take their offer of surrender. It's guaranteed rewards. Explain you're friendly. There's a chance to like, oh, nice, you're friendly, and they give you nothing. Look, you're not trying to win a morality battle here. There's no paragon. There's no renegade. It's just victory or death. 46 bucks. Nice. 25 scrap uh, short of being able to buy cloaking. Also doing rounding sectors, like, sometimes it's really tough to be able to judge... Like, oh, like, is that, do I have two jumps? Do I have three jumps? Pretty easy to tell here. So try and give yourself, like, if you can, like, make note of, like, buffer jumps. It's like, okay, well, if I think it's three, then I get here with that extra jump remaining, and I can just hit the exit, or I get that third jump here and back. Um, all right, empty beacon. Yeah, so, like I said, that's clearly going to be overtaken. We'll just hit the exit. Um, sell drone parts um at most like i'm pretty okay with nine drone parts i think nine drone parts is just a good general amount to have um like you're almost never going to be doing like nine fights in a sector now if you had drone control it's a little bit different they're a higher priority particularly also if it's like i'm using drones every single fight but yeah, we'll go ahead and sell three drones. It gets us again, pushes us closer to being able to buy cloaking in the upcoming sector if possible. Civilian sector. Civilian sectors are like the best sectors. Two to three stores. They have nebulas. So you can occasionally get extra jumps out of the sector. Lots of money. Nope. Go back. All right. There, there's a store. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. All right, so that's going to show us most of the beacons, right? We might get stuck with double stores. So let's get try and get two jumps before we hit the store here. Again, don't really need upgrades. All right, so we're still dealing with only one shielded ships. Um, all right, could you give us some fuel? So they're asking for two fuel. That dips us down to nine. Um... Single digit fuel is always a little bit sketchy, particularly in sectors that only have like one store. This sector has two to three, and we know that there's one upcoming. So I'm totally okay giving them this. They could give us a map. I think they can give us a reactor upgrade, or they can give us a ridiculous amount of money. All right, we got a map. So we see that uh, here's a store up here, and there's a store up here. So now we can just completely plan our sector. Be like, all right, we're going one, we're going two, we might go three, four, five, six, seven, like eight, nine, ten, something along those lines. So let's go. Uh, still one shield of ships. Okay. Uh, mini beam, pike beam, and a heavy laser one. We're completely safe in this fight. They cannot hurt us. So anytime I'm completely safe in a fight, I know we weren't talking about crew kills, but we have like some real crew kill potential. Check this out. We just uh, mind control the pilot. They're not, they're going to fight for us. We could do a ton of different crew kills. We could hack the O2, drain the O2, shoot it a bunch, and they'll die. But right now, we're just going to do a nice patient uh, O2 uh, uh, mind control right now. Now, it's not even... 
NGs do half combat damage. This is full combat damage. And hey, you know what? We get a, a small amount of dodge training. That's fine. As I said, often the best strategies in FTL or the best ways of playing FTL are very slow. So this is taking time, but we're not spending resources on drone parts. We're not spending resources on missiles. All right, now they're down 52 health. Let's shoot them. Okay, two shots land, 22 health. So I just need two more projectiles to land to finish them off. You have to be a little bit careful because like if a fire spreads, if a fire happens, they're going to jump out of that room real quick. Now you don't actually, here's a fun fact, you don't actually have to be worried about overkill. If they do not have a clone bay, as soon as this crew member dies, as soon as their health reaches zero, that's it. The victory is instantaneously rewarded. If that last shot that kills them also destroys their hull, then yeah, the ship blows up. But let's say you like drop it down to one hull and you have like 20 other projectiles incoming. Again, as soon as that body's dead, the game registers that victory. See, like this shot here hasn't even landed yet and you win. Oh, I got 21 bucks and a roper. Ooh, roper's fully trained on engines. Huts is not. All right, Huts, you're gonna go to sensors. Engie's gonna go back to doors. And we'll uh, now have fully trained in engines. Nice. 25% evasion. Good. 158 bucks. All right, that's enough to buy cloaking. Hey, it's cloaking. All right. Let's go ahead. We'll pick this up. Yep. Final slot. That's totally fine. Uh, let's go ahead and buy some fuel. We're down to nine fuel. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to sell the Artemis missile now. Uh, I want all the fuel. I want all the fuel because I don't really need to go to a store anymore. These weapons, this is an eight power weapon system. This is my max weapons. I'm totally comfortable winning with these. So I'm less wanting to go to stores. Um, and, like, running out of fuel and just getting stuck is about the worst thing. So, let's go ahead. Thank you for your service. Go ahead and max out to 14. Get yeah, running out of fuel can... It can be just the worst. All right. So, now that we have cloaking, let's talk about cloaking. So, cloaking, what it does... Is it increases our a evasion by 60%. This also means that enemy weapons are not charging... So you can use it to dodge enemy shots or you can use it to like prevent their weapons from charging. Like with a high level cloak, you can do that at the start of certain fights and you just like buy 5, 10, 15 seconds of time for all your weapons to charge and their weapons aren't doing anything. But now we have, we got all of our systems. We have all the weapons we're going to need. We have a comfortable amount of crew. So now we're in the really great position of we just need money. We just need money. Now, the thing I want to do next, though, in terms of, like, upgrades, because I'm still pretty cool with the weapons, particularly against 1-2 shields, the fact that we have Cloak to deal with their stuff, and hacking as well to help us out. So we have these two, like, this is a pure defensive system. This is a hinge system. This is mostly offense. We have our two shields. What I want to do is get to level 4 engines. Um, it's not very expensive. It's going to cost me 45 scrap, and... With full training of these two positions and level four engines, that gives me 40% base dodge. That means with cloaking, it's 100% evasion. That's what we want. We want our cloaking to always work so we don't eat random giant missiles. Uh, all right, let's go deal with the sun. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, so this is, I think, the first hazard event we've had to deal with. That's fine. Uh, so how suns work, solar flares, as long as you have one shield bubble up, doesn't matter if you have one, doesn't matter if you have four, uh, it will start up to two fires and deal one hull damage to you. Sometimes it'll just put up a fire. So that's your range is like one fire to two fires and a hull damage. Maybe it's a one fire, one hull damage. If your shields are down, it jumps to up to two hull damage and up to six fires. 
So, you gotta always be weary that you have enough shields to deal with a fight. So, they have a burst one here, and they have a mini beam. So, this can take down our two shields, and if it times with the uh, sun, we're, we're in for a bad time. Normally, it's a little bit slow. It doesn't happen, like, every 11 seconds or so. I think it takes, like, 20 seconds before the first one. Cloaking doesn't change that. If you cloak without any shields, you're still going to get hit for the full amount. Okay, also, so these two shots could land, and we see that they're mini beams. See this little green marker? That means it's about to charge. So let's go ahead and cloak. It's not going to be 100%. It's going to be 85 now we've already fired our weapons. It's important to know, see there and again, keep using the word important. Firing weapons when you're cloak reduces the time that you are cloaked, unless it's a beam weapon. But every other weapon, bombs, missiles, ions, lasers, flak, every single time you fire it, it reduces your time by 20%. Ooh. All right, let's go ahead and hit their shields. Okay, they're trying to run away. We could freak out, throw a hacking at them, but we know we got 10 seconds, and here comes a solar flare. Just took care of their ship for us. All right, so pause. We see that we have a fire here. We can turn off the O2 so it's less likely to feed the fire because it does eat uh, oxygen from the system. We're gonna go ahead and send our three crew helpers over there. Try and put out that fire as fast as possible. Now they're all gonna take damage while we do it. Again, Mantis is bad at putting out fires, but the rest are pretty solid. We're gonna heal them up and we're gonna send that crew member over to there. FTL is almost charged. I use back pa battery power to keep our systems alive. Nope. Okay, we can jump now, so I just need level one engines for that. And like I said, we can now kite our crew member through the med bay, and we see that they're healing, even though they're not in a dedicated spot. Get everyone back, plenty of time. Let's continue. I can't do any upgrades in a hazard event. All right, four scouts. So that means they're running from the start of the fight. Uh, four power weapon system, two shields. The weapons are a little bit scary, but this fires at nine, this fires at 10, this fires at 11 seconds. So if we do a desync hack, right? If we desync after these two weapons fire, they'll take, they'll hit our two shields most likely, and then this will fire later. And that's gonna buy us the time we need to be safe with our weapons. They also do have teleporting. So let's go ahead, we're gonna hack here. They're running away, but one of the crew is gonna come over and say hello. So we'll learn some fun boarding strategies. All right, so they're landing here. Now with a single boarder, it's pretty easy to see that we can pretty quickly overwhelm them. But um, if we move this NG right now, we lose control of our doors. And then this crew member could go here, here, or here. As a singular boarder, they will just go into the nearest system room that they can. Um, and I just don't want him indoors. So we're going to go ahead and send the mantis over there. And we'll keep the human here for now. I don't want them in my sensors because then I wouldn't be able to mind control this crew member here. So we're trying that. We also don't want them in piloting because that messes up with our evasion or FTL charging. So once we introduce a crew member to that room, they're going to go help out. And now I don't care about doors. We'll go ahead and send the NG. Or you could swap them out if you want to. It's fine. We'll just keep them here because, again, I want that line control. And we're using a lot of pauses, right? We're using a lot of pauses because we're breaking this fight down. First, we see what kind of ship they have. We come up with a plan to deal with their weapons. And then we take time to deal with their border. And now we're focused on the timing of their weapons. This fight is fine. Shot one. Micro pause. Micro pause. Shot two. Now we hack. Now, let's say this wasn't, like, a Mantis that's going to win this fight or with the NG in tow. What we can do now is we actually can switch their positions in the room. So we send them both out of the room. See these two little green squares here? And then we place them back in the room. So we put the NG there. 
Put the mantis over there. Unpause. There you go. They swapped in the room. So let's go ahead, shoot their weapons now, and uh, mind control their pilot. So this crew member now wants to do repairs. We have this crew that's boarded on our ship, and because they're mind control, that means their evasion is now zero, and their FTL's not charging. This is our crew's done their job. Let's help out. Okay. Send them both in there to heal. Their weapon system is completely offline, so we'll go ahead and go down to one shield for the time being. All right, let's go ahead and hit their shield system. So we could hit their piloting, which makes it tougher to run, but this crew member is now assigned to fix this room. If we hit the shield system, this crew member will run to do that repair. And that also takes them out of the piloting. If you want to take time to try and get a crew kill here or whatever, there's a lot of different strategies, but we can just kill them. Crew is healed up. Send them back. 43 bucks. All right. Engine, engine. Uh, one of the reactors for it. Now, yeah, we're a little bit light on reactor, but we can just use our battery to uh, fill that gap pretty easily. So all of our systems, save this one, are currently powered. But we'll just buy uh, another reactor as soon as we can. All right, I really don't have any interest in stores anymore. We have 15, 17 fuel, more than enough. I just want to make money. And taking fights is what gives us money. Oh, I'm totally going to be a hero here. Oh, this is, uh, remember that uh, strategy we used before for crew kills? Like against Double Mantis, the uh, pilot hack mind control is awesome for it. Because they do so much damage to each other. It's ridiculous. See, they're already at like minimum health. There you go, 42 bucks. Uh, upon closer inspection, you see a ship under attack was a rebel scout. It's too damaged to put up much of a fight. Destroy the ship or get extra jumps. I lean towards um, destroying the ship and salvaging it. It's just guaranteed money, and I like my guaranteed money. Now, we have a map of the sector, so we actually know where the fights are. So it has a little bit more value. I don't particularly remember there being many fights towards the end of the sector, but maybe I misremembered. That's fine. Um, if we were, like, really desperate looking for a store and this buys us enough jumps to find it, I could choose this option. But I, I just want the money. 20 bucks. Yeah, it's like, it's not really like it was going to give us extra fights. So... Not as tempting. All right, we're up to 84 scrap. So uh, let's go ahead and buy that reactor. So we have everything running. And now we have a little bit of flexibility on like, what do we want to improve on? We could think about improving weapons. We could upgrade our hacking. That has some nice things that, that gives us a lot of flexibility. Or we could go into uh, Shields 3 if we wanted to. Um. Let's let's go into weapons. Let's get our our, our weapons um, a little bit nastier. So you know what? I'm so cool with that. Let's just go ahead and get a buffer point in our weapons. So this is a nice defensive offensive thing we can just do. If somehow like a weapon's able to deal a little bit of damage to ours, we're still able to maintain for our uh, solid volley. And again, buffer points don't require any reactor or anything. It's just there. Reject their offer. Uh, completely safe fight. So as far as boarding, enemies will try to board you twice, unless it's an elite fight or the rebel flagship. Um, so they're gonna board once and then they're gonna board again. All right, got one, a singular human. Uh, again, pretty easy to deal with. We'll send the Mantis, we'll send this NG as soon as it stabilizes. I just don't even want them in that system room. There we go. And we have the human here for our sensors if we need it. Because it's a good idea that we're just going to mind control this human here. Because we've already established that we're completely safe from these weapons, we're just going to target their shields. Get that mind control going. Now they're really vulnerable. What's nice is we don't really have to pay attention. We know we win this fight against one human. Alright. Now, because again... We don't, 
we don't need like systems operating. We can do, we can do this, like maximize it. Actually, let's use our battery. Let's, uh, we still need our pilot trained, I believe. Yeah, I'm slacking. Um, so now let's go ahead and crack piloting. Turn our crew to the positions before we jump. 75 scrap to get another weapon online. All right, I'm going to take this jump. I don't know if that one or that one. Ooh, is that one actually available? Four, five, six. Ah, oh, it's really close. All right, so if I take this one, I don't want to get stuck that these are both dive jumps, and then I just kind of hosed myself. So we'll take this beacon. If we can go there, fine. If not, all right, looks like we might miss out a couple beacons. Sometimes you miss out on beacons in sectors. Uh, Sure, let's hail them. If I ignore them, I get nothing. We'll hail them. Hi, Zoltan Shield. All right, Zoltan Shields are pretty awful. They're one of the more fear things to run into. So this Zoltan Shield takes five damage before it goes down. And while it's up, I cannot hack them. I cannot mind control them. I cannot board into this ship. So none of those systems do anything right now. This is actually one of the reasons why... Um, see, like, I'll do things and then I'll like, why do I do these things? Because I've been doing it for so long. But this is why we wanted better weapons up next, because there are certain fights where these systems aren't going to be of a benefit to us. All right, so we're going to go ahead, cloak the missile. As soon as I see it on my screen. Yep, that's an Artemis. See how it has those uh, little fins there? So we did a bit of a cost-benefit analysis at one point, right? We sold the Artemis to buy the fuel so that we had our fuel situation taken care of. Artemis right now would be fantastic to have online. And had I been a little bit more conservative in buying some of my reactor upgrades, would have been able to have been able to purchase the fuel, been fine. Or if I purchased that fuel in that earlier store, I probably would have been okay. All right, let's try and take their weapons and let's do a lot of micro pauses here. Because once we crack that Zoltan shield, mind control now works. Hi there. Nice. So I'm not particularly inclined to use a, a drone part here for hacking. Uh, their weapons are completely offline. We'll just crack their shields. Again, get an empty pilot. 48 bucks plus 22. That's a lot of money. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Both of those are overtaken. So we made. <gasps> Whoa. That one isn't. That's crazy. But it's not. See, it doesn't say rebels are about to gain control of this beacon. That's good. So it's actually a good jump. Wow. All right. That's fine. We had a plan. Let's stick to the plan. Let's go flack. Do, 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 do. Yep, didn't lie. Uh, all right, they hacked my engines down. Wow. Sometimes you don't see that event, and sometimes you get it three times in a run. All right, so they got uh, three shots and this. That's a little bit of a dangerous weapon setup. So let's go ahead and get ready to hack their weapons. Our cloaking is not going to be as effective. Right. All right, look like we don't have to do any special shenanigans here. So again, let's go ahead and desync their weapons. One shot, two shots. All right, we'll go ahead and fire our flak because it's a little bit slower. Oh, I almost shot that thing down. It is possible to do. You can shoot down drones. All right, so let that get a little bit of a leeway because they're a little bit slower. So let's do this. So we'll keep our flag back there. Now we have both of our weapons at the exact same spot. We'll target their weapon system because we really want to crush it. Mind control the pilot. Nice. Now we're just safe. 
Another option would have just been to uh, cloak the volley. It's very unlikely we, with the, I don't know, so 60, 72% evasion, the three shots. It's very unlikely we take damage in that scenario. Uh, let's crack shields. Fight's over. 20 bucks. Reactor. Now, if our weapons weren't as solid, we didn't have uh, the like defensive systems that we have in cloaking and hacking, you would probably p get the shields three. It just makes you safer. Again, mitigating damage is like the best way to save money and to stay alive, right? If they don't hurt you, you get to stay alive. Um, okay, it's a somewhat safe fight. Go ahead, power things this way. We'll just take our time. Go ahead, crack weapons. Go ahead, mind control the pilot. So the nice thing about mind control is it's no, there are no resources for it. You just use the reactor and you're done. And you get the effect that you want. Um, pretty good on fuel. If you were concerned about your drone part usage, you could take two. Not accepting surrenders. 40 bucks. Um, yeah, let's start upgrading shield system. Get to shields three. Make it just really tough for ships to hurt us. Uh, sell drone parts. Uh, again, you could sell three. I'm okay. Drops me down to eight, but there's been quite a few fights where we haven't had to use drone parts. All right, so we have Mantis controlled and NG controlled. Uh, so NG's no fights, lots of free stuff. We've been through those a couple times. Let's go Mantis just to kind of maybe deal with some boarding situations. Only one store, uh, so that's not great, but we do have another green sector on the other side. Maybe it's nice. Maybe it's a nice sector, but I kind of want to see deal with some... Uh, boarding strategies if we have to. Again, for the most part, we're already, like, safe in all the fights. Okay, so that's a dead end. So we go one, two, three. Wow, this sector layout's pretty brutal. Four, five. Maybe just go one, two, three, four, so we can spy those beacons. Five, six, seven, eight. So there's like a good chance, like if this is a store, that's a store, these three beacons are stores, or that's a store, we just don't, we may not even see a store this sector. That's why, like you can't, you can't bank on something being, you know, an FTL. Like, but again, if we needed stores, we would have gone to the NG sector. All right, wow, burst two, two mini beams. Okay, cool, cool, decent weapons. Oh, this is the prize fighter event. I wasn't paying attention to the text because why would I do that? But um, they only have three mantis. If they don't have an NG, then it's it's an event. That's fine. We're getting boarded by a mantis. All right, mantis here. So we'll send the mantis over there because we want to have this. And we're going to go send the human there to help out. And we'll just rotate the NG, NG down here. All right. And go ahead and swap them in the room, right? We're focused on this, but we're also paying attention to their weapons. Our weapons are almost charged, so let's go ahead, fire our flak, and get that mind control going. Make sure that our crew member is still alive. Yep, they're doing good. Okay, here are three shots incoming. So, um, because this is 12 seconds and this is 11, it's not actually gonna time with the mini beam, so we're somewhat safe. Now we're doing... You could just auto cloak right now. Make sure you're 100% safe and go for it. But what we can do is we can do some micro pauses. Yeah. So it hit shield one time. And it hit the shield the second time. So now we are actually in danger of taking this damage to our ship. If one of these shots had missed, then the second shield would have absorbed this one and we would be completely safe. But that's not the case. So let's go ahead, battery. Cloak. 3% uh, chance we got hit there. We can use battery power to heal our crew. So this event is a little bit interesting. Um, we can let them jump away and we'll and we can we chase them down. We get to fight them again, 
and when they surrender or when you defeat them, you get a guaranteed weapon. Now, I'm of the mindset that I really like my weapons right now, so I just want the money. Um, so we're just going to go for the money, but if you were in a situation where you desperately needed a weapon, uh, you could try for it. So let's crack that piloting. The other thing is this ship jumps away almost instantly. Those other fights where he had like 12 seconds? No, this thing is almost instant. Uh, 55 scrap? I think it's 60 scrap to get our shields. It's okay. Auto ship. All right. It's cloaking and trying to run away. All right. Mind control does nothing for us, but we'll probably cloak. I would definitely want to cloak this small bomb here. My two shields can deal with this. This hitting, this ignores shields because it's a bomb. Also, remember putting your crew back in the right position. And if that happens, like it hits my weapons, boy, I lose a lot of offense. We could hack their weapons right now. That's a possibility. Hack their weapons, slow them down so they don't fire. Or we could do what I'm going to do and, uh, like, maybe if our first volley is just complete trash, hack their weapons, at, uh, hack their piloting so that our second volley lands. Let's cloak. I want to see if this hits or not before I make any determination. All right. It's super unlikely that they dodge nine shots. So let's do this. Let's just fire three shots here, and we're going to wait a bit. Do some cute little micro pauses. All right, so Flak has already destroyed their system. So we could hit their cloaking, or we can hit their weapons. And every single shot's going to hit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit their cloaking here. Doesn't matter. They're dead either way. So we took a little bit of extra time. Got a benefit. Store. All right, like I said, that could be the only store. If you needed a store, go to the store. I don't think we do. There we are. Ah, they have a missile. All right, let's go ahead and hack that missile down. Just buys us a little bit of time. They have two shots, so we only need two shields. Put the power here for the time being. It's in piloting. That's gross. So our evasion is not going to be 100%. So I'm going to actually send them out of the rooms and these two crew members into the room. And then we're going to move the uh, NG down here, I guess. I just don't want to... I don't want them to beat up my pilot. Back down their system. And again, we'll do a crew rotation here. And uh, we haven't even used cloaking yet, so let's depower, repower, mind control. Wasn't the best volley, but we have an absurd amount of projectiles. We killed their crew. Go ahead, heal them up. Are you healed? Nice. Go back into piloting. And go ahead, heal. Put one back. 50 bucks. Safe positions. Uh, 75 scrap. Would you feel more comfortable if we had reactor? You can go ahead and do that. We could buy reactor. We could buy another one. Sure. If we were doing shield hacking, uh, because we had like slower weapons, we could up or we would have to upgrade our hacking to, to keep up with that. So level one hacking will take down one shield 100% of the time and two shields about 50% of the time. Um, as far as I know, there's really no way to micro to make sure that that happens consistently. Uh, three shielded ships, though, will require a level two hack. That That's 100%, so of course one and two will be taken down. And level four to level five shields, five shields being incredibly rare, it happens, incredibly rare, uh, a level three hack is required to get through that level of shields. All right, um, well, let's just take jumps, it's fine. Okay, empty jumps, less fine. Just keep on keeping on. 
Uh, jettison the pod, pry it open. We could lose crew here, so let's just jettison the pod. Wow, three empty jumps in a row. Sometimes that happens. Uh, yeah, I promise to help. NG crew? Uh, Ion will also give us a blue option here. I don't think we've done too many blue options, but yeah, so blue options are generally better. Generally better. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're just fun little things. Uh, sometimes they're actually not the best option here. Um, and also, not all blue options are the same. So level one cloaking here is like low scrap reward. If we had level three cloaking, doesn't require doesn't mean if it's powder or not. Just just we have upgraded our cloaking to level three. It would be a high scrap reward. But NG and Ion, which we don't have right now, uh, those are always high scrap rewards. So we'll just let's get the NG do the job. Get sixty eight bucks. Great. All right. Um, let's buy a little bit of. Uh, let's upgrade this. And you know, let's just get another power bar. We can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, like I said, I'm not really curious about pushing ahead, finding a store or anything. Just hopefully get fights. Fights lead to money. So we're completely safe against this three-shielded ship. Completely safe. But they have a med bay. So uh, we could do crew kill stuff. One interesting way to do crew kills is uh, we could hack the med bay. Because we have mind control. And we mind control, like I said, let's mind control the pilot. Let's turn off cloaking. Let's turn off our med bay. Let's put all that power into our engines because, uh, again, I'm still a little bit slow in the training. This, again, just shows you, like, the, the flexibility of hacking here. Nice. We got one kill. Uh, they're at 100%. You know what? Um, I think we're going to let the NG heal here. Let's let them heal. We don't have to. We could hack this down and kill them all, but we're we're gonna mind control and get them to fight again. And hopefully we can convince them both to go into the med bay. That would be ideal. Actually not hundred percent sure this works. I've almost I almost never do med bay hacks, but always time to learn. So again, if we mind control the NG, the mantis would just ignore them. That's why we're not doing that one. So the NG's gonna run off. Once it takes enough damage, it gets to about 25% its health. 21. There, see, runs. Now we open the doors, close the doors, and do a hack. And not only does they, do they not heal, it's actively hurting them. All right, so now the Mantis is trying to get into that room. What do we do? We can just shoot the room. Okay. So the mantis is going to go, eventually going to break down the doors. It takes uh, quite a few hits, particularly doors are really effective in easy mode. They're incredibly effective in easy mode and harder difficulties less so. So we're actually going to depower this to let them get that repair done faster. Because elsewise it's at like 25% repair speed. Plus, hey, again, getting some dodge training. That's nice. How are you doing? All right, they're getting there. They're getting there. I like to throw in just a few crew kills. I generally am like super focused on trying to get crew kills every single opportunity I get. Um, but, you know, these are just to give you opportunities on like what they are. Put them in your head and like maybe like take those chances when you can feel comfortable with them uh getting crew kills generally nets better rewards nice 28 scrap and an ion blast so you can get extra fuel out of storage which is just a ton of fuel and then a high scrap reward uh you also often get a weapon often being like one in nine chance of getting a free weapon or like one in nine chance of getting a free crew One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. A, the ceiling ship. Chance of double rewards. Again, three shields. We're safe. Uh, we can just mind control the pilot here. 
pretty straightforward crew kill thanks to just picking up mind control. We'll go for a twofer. Again, like I said, we've already established that we're completely safe. See, this is the nice thing about being safe, right? Because we now get to take our opportunities in fights like this to, like, go for potential crew kills. All right, and we got full training now. So now when we cloak, 100% dodge. That's what we want to see. All right. So we're not going to shoot them right now because what happens if we break that system, which is pretty likely because their piloting is bad, the Mantis will just instantaneously leave and then they might dodge a couple of our other projectiles. And you always have to balance between hurting the crew and hurting their ship. Thirty-six. So I need three more shots to land to kill them. Oh yeah, almost made it out because of the fire. But we got forty-one bucks, twenty-six additional dollars plus a heavy laser two. All right, heavy laser two is kind of interesting. Again, pretty solid weapon. We have hundred and twelve scrap. Let's go to this distress beacon. Giant alien spiders, I still don't have a solution to you. You're too powerful. Demand the surrender of their goods. All right, heavy two, heavy one, plus they got some borders. So again, it would be really beneficial if we got a crew kill here. And we also don't want them to run away. And again, we're already safe. So we don't, I don't even need my engines. Oh, they're boarding with two crew. Nice. All right. So they're boarding with two crew. So these two crew are generally going to try and find a two by two room or a one by two room to exist in. Um, because they're going to get outnumbered, right? Like watch, they're actually going to leave this room. Wow, they're not leaving? Weird. All right, that's fine. So we're going to send the mantis and we'll send the human in. And we'll actually send this human in and uh, this human in. We'll just move our NG down to here. And we're trying to kill them before they leave. And now we're going to mind control their pilot. Which I should have done earlier, but that's okay. Okay, uh, so they have two shields, so the flak takes care of those two shields, and then I can do six damage because the flak can miss. So I need them to do like 10, 15 points of damage to each other. All right, 10 health, 41. So what we can do now, this is a little bit fun, we're gonna cloak, not to dodge their shots, but to prevent their teleporter from trying to pull them back. I have no idea what level their teleporter is. So now it's a four on one. There we go. Okay, our doors are locked. It's fine. Now we're gonna hack. Shoot them to death. Hey, got a free thing because we got a crew kill. Got a drone schematic, so that's another 25 scrap on top of 51. Exit. Nice. Um, yeah, so you could, if you want level three this, that's fine. And you can do all sorts of, you can get a buffer point in oxygen, or we could uh, start getting that other weapon online if we wanted to. At this point, I'm pretty comfortable with anything. Uh, I'd be even... If you wanted to just see how much money you could get, you could do that. But uh, let's let's be safe, right? Um, so let's get level two cloaking. We really don't need another weapon online. We already have nine projectiles. Like, that's a ton. Continue. Do I need repairs? No. Zoltan controlled or rock controlled? Okay. Ah, <sighs> decisions, decisions, decisions. Let's go Zoltans. So the only reason I don't like rock controlled, well, I mean, we could. So rock control has an event where like 25% of the time we just lose a crew member. They just die. 
Uh, there are still two stores there. Zoltans can have some nasty events. We don't typically get to deal with Zoltan shields. I don't know. What's what's a better learning experience for players? Uh, let's go rock. Just because like if they more likely have boarding events. I think outside of like Zoltan border police, we don't get to see them. Plus, Zoltan shields are actually a big weakness. Like, why go into a weakness? Asteroid field. All right. So, asteroid field. Again, I think this is the first time we've run into this particular hazard. So, the asteroids are going to be pelting shields, doing system damage. It's a little bit random. The more shields you have, the more frequent the uh, asteroids become. Now, that doesn't mean, hey, don't get by any shields so that you're less likely to deal with asteroids. No, no, no. You should definitely get them up. But just that's why it always seems like, wow, they seem to increase a whole lot. It's actually based on your shield level. Okay, so they got three shots and a flak two. Flak twos are interesting in that because they're uh, they're like 21 seconds to fire, your cloaking always comes off cooldown. We could potentially take damage from these three shots, though, but we have cloaking, so if, or if we lose too many of our shields, we'll we'll act retroactively. Oh, okay. Mind control. What's nice is it's going to take a long time for a rock crew member to help out here because they're super slow. All right, our shield system looks fine. Nice. Now the rock's immunifier. That's why they're not taking any damage here. Let's take crack piloting. No. They offered me like five drone parts or something, maybe. Got drone part back. Nice. So even though we're like ahead and we're winning, we're still, I'm doing things like conserving my drone parts. If I don't need to use them, then I'm not going to. All right, no cloaking. First, dangerous weapons. Yeah, I think this warrants a weapon hack here. And this is just gonna be a slow their weapons down as much as possible. Black. Off the screen. Mind control. Nice. Just crush their weapons. And while, yes, we have benefited from picking up uh, pretty nice stuff, let's have some fun. Maybe hit piloting. Maybe got a kill or two. Um, you see how we're not taking damage? Like... Because we spend our scrap properly, because we're upgrading uh, our defenses, our offenses accordingly, like, enemy ships just are, they're not threats to us. So, we're saving all this money on not having to do repairs. We're not in fights for incredibly long periods of time. The longer you're in a fight, the more likely you are to take damage. 59... Boop. Where can I stick you so that you're not... I want my burst to be on the same level. Eh, I guess. I'm not really comfortable doing, like, one, two, three, four in terms of, like, firing my weapons using hotkeys. If you want shields four here, just, uh... Like, that's totally fine again we have tons of money uh let's kind of keep the store in check like i said i wouldn't mind picking up additional drone parts perhaps uh piracy okay they do have cloaking so enemy ships they just cloak instantly right off the bat uh, they also have uh potentially five shots plus a, it might be a small bomb all right we got a rock let's go ahead and send mantis to deal with it and we can go ahead and send our human to help out as well and we're going to move them. They're one crew member, so they're just going to sit in that system. Again, this is pretty nice. We don't really have to pay any attention at this point. Um, let's do... We can cloak. Cloak the volley if it cracks too many of our shields. Or this bomb is annoying. Okay, let's cloak. 
I don't really care about cloak duration. Uh, I just needed to cloak the one volley. Dunk their weapons. If you want to, change your crew positions. Again, if you were concerned about the O2 just getting too low, we do have the battery. Go ahead, power that oxygen back up. Now we can send our crew back there, heal them up. And they cloak. Um, so the most part, you're only going to be able to get in one volley per for the first cloak cycle. Unless you have, like, a bunch of flax or, like, weapons that fire, like, 10 second time. Uh, but then you'll get two for the second one. Let's shred their piloting. If you shot their shields, fine. If you shot their cloaking to turn it off the delay, also fine. Again, um, it's really easy to just, like, shoot enemy ships when they're not a threat to you. It's like, oh, like, you can shoot whatever you want. Okay, I said keeping that store in eye. Fuel. Uh, if we had long-range scanners or mapping, we, like, knew this beacon. Anytime you see a sun hazard and there's no ship detected, it's this event. All right, so the only thing we need to do is run. We have a store. Oh, we have two rocks in our med bay. That's acceptable. I'm going to go ahead and send the NG to help out. If we only put one crew member in there, um, at level one medbay, they could get punched down fast enough that they die from it. It would take a long time, though. Also, like, our FTL almost charges instantly because there's no ship here. Once you do, once there's no enemy ship present, your weapons, you're just, your FTL just charges very quickly, by comparison. We're out of here before the solar flare even goes off. Uh, ooh. Don't want that store. Does it make a difference? Probably not. All right. Okay. Also, it's like a good habit just to hit the pause button every time you jump. So at the start of the fight, so read the text. Got intruders on board. We see they got a missile. Uh, that's probably what we're going to save our cloak for. Heavy laser one. Looks like a mini beam. Also, make sure your weapons are charged. That's a thing. All right, we got two boarders, and they're in a room we don't like them to be in. Um, all right, we're going to send our three crew to try and deal with that situation. I don't really want to dedicate anybody else more to it right now. All right, I'm going to actually send this human out, this human out, and swap them. I don't want my weapons human getting hit. Uh, cause I, not just because I like them, but it's... let's. Like, I'm going to want them to stay in that room to keep powering my weapons as soon as the rocks decide to leave. Uh, it's not a really good situation where, like, venting is a good idea because, um, I mean, we just, we really don't have to. And we can go ahead and we can move the NG down here so we can use that mind control. We do need maximum dodge uh, for the missile anyways. Okay, pause, battery, get that mind control back online. MC the pilot. Cool. All right, now let's make sure the situation is okay. Yeah, it's not, like we're not winning all the fights. So we're gonna go ahead and swap these two crew out and we'll go ahead and send our engines crew member to help out. The engine is just is not a very good fighter. And again, we're gonna go ahead and rotate again. All right. So again, we left the crew in the key situations that I needed them to. I needed one crew here for the mind control. If I did need to dodge, depending on what kind of missile this was, I wanted my 100% evasion. Uh, we were able to send the resources as needed. We can now go have them heal because again, their weapon system is completely destroyed. Uh, if you desperately needed fuel, but we have a store in the next jump. So, 57 bucks. Everyone goes back. 
We actually, look, we actually connect to the beacon back and we hit the store and then up through here. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll buy a pre-igniter at the store. You don't normally don't, like, you don't need, like, 300 scrap floating around m most of the time. It's just, like, I need enough to buy the thing that I want. Ooh, those weapons are kind of all over the place. One, two, three shields. This comes way after this weapon, though. That's a heavy ion. So our first volley is pretty safe. But if you are uncomfortable, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's hack their weapons. Hack them to oblivion. We don't know what kind of bomb that is. I'm just hitting the flak at a general area. It doesn't really matter. Mostly it's just for shield suppression. Tons of resists. Yeah. So you notice how Zoltan shields have, uh, or Zoltan ships have Zoltan shields. Zoltan shields is an augment. Uh, a lot of enemy ships have augments. NG ships will have me NG medbot dispersal or emergency medbot dispersal. Um, what's the other one? Rock ships will have rock plating. Uh, slug ships will have slug repair gel. Hull beam. Oh my gosh, that that, that is a ton of damage. Close replicator. I don't care about anything else. Should we take the hull beam? Show you how amazing the hull beam is. No, I don't like swapping out weapons. Also, we could take small bomb for crew kills in phase one, but I think that's a little bit much. I'm going to buy that just to show you the whole beam swipes. Bye. Bye. It's fine. Because I think they're important to know, uh, particularly against the flagship fight. Plus, we haven't actually got to use beam weapons. One, two, three. Now we're, we're losing a couple jumps, I guess. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I mean, we could dive. Uh, store, though. 16 fuel by the two drone parts. Again, none of these are particularly interesting. If I was in a ship that didn't have uh, a cloaking system because it just had, like, limited systems in general, um, shield charger could be a decent augment for phase two, the flagship fight. It's probably not that big of a deal because uh, I think there are way, way less drones than there are in hard mode. Um... So yeah, like none of these things are particularly interesting. Again, my hole is fine for what I need it for. We could go shields four if you want. You want to go shields four? We can. There we go. Like most fights, we won't even need it. So it's like, I don't really need the power for it. Go away. Oh, that's nice. You're very kind. Asteroid field. Oof. All right. So they don't have cloaking. They do have boarding. That looks like a... Oof. Those are nasty weapons. This is actually a properly nasty fight. Okay. I'm game. See, I probably should have bought reactor. Pe um, well, I'm totally fine with it. the systems being what they are. Like, you may feel more comfortable not depowering a bunch of systems this much. I d like, I don't need to power anything right now. Nothing's happening on my side of the ship. Okay, let's go ahead and hack their weapons, because they're gross. And then we'll do some pauses to see... Rock is here. Alright, I'm sending you... Sending you... Move you here. Okay, see if we need a cloak yet. I really... I, I pretty much want to cloak the whole volley. For the most part, it's all got a time together. So we're going to wait for their stuff to fire. We're going to be pretty patient here. If you don't want to, or we can just hack it down. It's also fine. Let's just hack it down. Let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. Let's buy our weapons time, because it got slowed down by the uh, cloaking. Mind control the pilot. Both shots here. All right. So beam weapons. So hull beam does one damage. It means as long as they have one shield bubble up, this swipe does absolutely nothing. But with zero shields, it means every room that this beam cuts through takes one point of damage. If it doesn't have any system, then it actually takes two points of damage. 
So we can do like a, a five room swipe this way, it looks like. Five damage for two power, not bad. All right, my weapon system's completely offline. Oh, we didn't quite get there. Their shield came up, that happens. Uh, let's go ahead and move our crew. Don't even need the beam weapon. 55 bucks. Again, like, I bought the shields on a whim. We could just power the systems that we have. Like, three shields and cloaking is going to be fine for most fights. No real issue. Continue. Uh, if you want a store... Uh, 62 bucks doesn't really excite me. Maybe we get a store here. Maybe we get a fight with a chance for more scrap or just free scrap or nothing. But I'd probably rather just get, you know, 50% chance of getting more money. hey -o. All right, three shields we're completely safe with. So no need to use any resources here at all. Trained in all the real key systems. So I'm kind of inclined to just try and break its cloaking. Wow, that was a ton of dodges. Okay, that's fair. We'll try again. All right. Beam swipe through four. That's about the best way you can do on these ships is a four. Finish them off. 60 scrap. Let's just buy three reactor. There you go. No concerns. Next sector. Abandoned sector or resulting controlled. Oh, both of them are spooky. All right, let's go. We're going to the spookiest of the spookies. I'm going abandoned. Abandoned sector seven is one of the most terrifying sectors in FTL. So abandoned sectors are have Lanius. Um, you don't get to see them unless you have advanced edition. And they also have the presence of Lanny bombers. Lanny bombers are some of the most feared ships. More feared than the uh, flagship. Uh, so I wouldn't hold it against you if you're like, let's just go Zoltan. But I want to show where you can... It's not the end of the world, per se. Uh, but mostly just to show you like how good our ship is. Because we did all the proper things before. Well, most of them. We could have got more crew kills. But anyways... But we gotta feel pretty safe right now. Like, look at this thing. Ah, oh, it's glorious. All right. So there could be two stores in this sector. I want to build up a little bit of a bankroll before we get there. So we can go like one. Now yeah, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we hit this jump. We'll know if these two are stores. Gotta still scout our sectors just because we're doing well. No reason to not do our due diligence here. Then we can go up top side. Six drone parts for 22 scrap. No. All right, no stores here. Distress. There's actually a chance this distress beacon is just completely empty. It happens in advanced uh, uh, and abandoned sectors. Single life form. All right, you can always investigate. This part is safe. Looks healthy, but mental state is questionable. All right, so there's a 50% chance we lose a crew member here. Uh, maybe it's not 50%. Like, th sometimes they just do damage to your ship. Sometimes they just kill a crew member. Well, let's just leave them to the ravings. Not going to risk it. Again, almost any time an event uh, asks me to um, potentially risk one of my crew members, it's just it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Particularly to pick up another crew member. Okay. Let's see if we can come across a bomber. Or a Pulsar. We haven't had one of those either. ASP allies. So this means they're on our team. Okay, so this is a Lanny scout. This is one of two layouts you see with Lanny ships. All right, the scout is the easier one. I think it can only come with hacking. Uh, it's always two crew. So we have an ASB, uh, but it's on our side. Okay, so what are they hacking? Heavy laser, heavy laser. So two shields is completely safe. 
provided they don't hack my shields. Okay, they hacked my med bay. So, because there's no interference, we're just going to focus on... Well, actually, you know what we could do? You want to get... You want to get crazy, chat? You want to have a uh, fun chat that's not here? Crew kill. We just need to cloak this missile. All right. Um, we cloak. They don't have a clone bay. Yeah, get 83 bucks. Nice. Uh, finish off the assailant with the help of the battery, but the fight rages on. All right, sometimes you get double rewards from here. Like, we get a crew, they fix some hull, didn't happen here. Um, one thing I want to note is the beam, beam weapons to deal damage to crew have to go through the tile that they're standing in. Uh, so if you pick up the slug ship and you have anti-bio beam, it's not, well, I just zip it through the room that they're standing in and it hits everybody. Nope. Gotta be on that exact tile that they're standing on. Like that, it says miss. Um, so it's interesting. See, it's not even hostile. We can actually do uh, ship upgrades. Get two more reactor. Okay. Well, let's see if that's a store. Okay. Uh, so they got Lanius on their ship. Cool. No cloaking, uh, nothing too particularly special. So if, the, if this volley is timed, so this fires at 1, 2, I'm sorry, this fires at 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds, and each 5 seconds it fires more projectiles. So 5 is 1, 2, uh, 10. So that's the scary one, right? Like this fires 2 projectiles, this will fire a projectile, that's 3, and then that sets up for this heavy damage from this one. But again, it's pretty easy to cloak that, and again, we also have 4 shields. So we can just do pretty simple mind control here. All right. So we've already took their shields down now. It's a really great thing you can do with a beam weapon is you can run it through their piloting. By running it through their piloting, what happens is, is maybe their piloting goes down and their evasion drops. And then all your other shots hit. There it is, piloting's down, so now every single one of these burst shots just completely hits their weapons. Yep, and we're safe. It's a little bit funny, because we hit the O2 here, so they uh, lose a little bit of oxygen. Problem is, is Lanius don't care about that. Like, the Lanius don't need oxygen to breathe. They suck oxygen out of the room. That's why their ships don't have O2 systems. So if we wanted to... Yeah, look, the uh, poor NG died because their O2 is busted, so these rooms are just not getting oxygen back into them. Bum. Slowly but surely... This is one of the ships where flak isn't great because the, there's so many one by two rooms, it's just likely to miss. Again, we could mind control here, hull beam here. I mean, so it does two damage for every empty room, so this is now a six damage swipe. Fifty-four bucks. Store? Hey, it's a store. Sure. Why not? Reconstructor, uh, scrap recovery arm. I almost never buy scrap recovery arm. You probably don't need it at this point. Oh, you could go this and this and, like, one-shot the flagship. I'll buy two of that. Everything else is fine. No need to do anything else at all. Um... What else do I want? We can just do ship upgrades. That? Sure. Blue options, some doors, buffer points. Again, it's it's fine. We still have plenty of money we can make. Uh, 
missile. Let's go ahead and hack this. If we weren't hacking uh, this system, again, we would just essentially cloak the missile, mind control the pilot, land our shots. And again, we're still doing volleys here. I still want to hit more systems versus just doing two extra points of damage. No. Uh, the reason being, again, once the, the pilot maybe comes down and does repairs, but they're actually going to break that system first. And so actually this swipe here, two, four, five, six damage. Nice. 94 bucks. Uh, upgrade this to level three. Nothing else I could... Uh, normally we get this. Let's get this up to level two. We're in a landing sector. It's possible that could be helpful. Another store. No, I don't want one. Uh, I don't need one. Uh, time to communicate. All right, landing bombers. So landing bombers you don't even see until sector four. You can actually run into abandoned sectors as early as sector two. Um, oh, this is actually a pretty nice one. In hard mode, oh, they're filthy. They can have as many as three bonus systems. They're the only ship outside the flagship that does. Uh, so they could have cloaking, teleporter, and mind control. Uh, also a clone bay. So they're gonna board us with lannies, which, like, they could mind control your crew member, send the two lannies in the room, drain the oxygen from the room. Um, it's gross. So we have a couple options. Well, we only need two shields to deal with this, so let's start with that. All right, that's fine. Um, we could hack their teleporter. If we hack their teleporter, uh, their crew gets sent back to their ship. Even if they were event ones, even though they have a two-person teleporter, it would just keep taking everybody off our ship that's there on their side. Um... All right, we have pretty overwhelming projectiles. I want to do a shield hack just to kind of show you what a shield hack setup does. Because we've been mostly engineering hack. All right, so we got two crew here. Uh, it's a little bit sketch. So let's first open up the doors. And luckily we have level two oxygen. And we're going to send the mantis, the human, uh, and the NG. With the level two that plus the powered med bay, we might be okay. They now have to drain the oxygen from the ship. If only one boarded us, this level two oxygen would mitigate the uh, O2 loss. With two, it's gonna slowly drain. All right, also I should have already hacked. So we're gonna hack their shields down. Two shots, two shields, we're fine. All right, so previously, right, we were using these shots to set up the beam weapon. Like, we suppress their shields, but now that we go through there, we actually use the beam weapon to set up the shots. So we can do, like, a swipe like this. And again, maybe we knock down the piloting, and then we can do everything else at their weapons. Oh, here comes a missile. And things that, if anybody had interfered with my piloting so that my dodge wasn't any good, we could have done something different. So that our evasion was going to be 100% against this missile. Cloak. Oh, level two. Oh, it doesn't matter. Now they're mind controlled. Yeah, just all the shots land. Uh, have 100% dodge. Ship just dies, evaporates. Platform, get three fuel. All right, they're still holding their own here. Yeah. So, uh, in... Again, and in hard mode, again, you, you, you don't get to have all this fun, fun stuff because uh, you're so far behind in terms of overall scrap. But if you do get stuck in Laney sectors, you're concerned about Laney borders, being upgrading your oxygen to level two can really help mitigate uh, some of the issues they cause. Uh, I can't re upgrade reactor anymore because we don't have any more reactor to build into. Okay, just more buffer points. Attack the slaver scum. So slaver ships generally have really high rewards. Now it looks like they're gonna board us. All right, we can vent, which hurts the rock. Lanny doesn't care. 
Hanes don't care. Um, do I want to hack the O2 just for really high scrap rewards? Yes. Or med bay, sorry. So, shields three deal with those projectiles, and we can always cloak this. So we're actually not even going to fight this ship, really. Okay, let's just send everybody in. Level 2 oxygen. And I really want the Mantis to be dealing with them. I should have done this differently. That's okay. No need to panic. No need to panic because we didn't do it perfectly. Cloak. Nice. Are they both going to the med bay? Let them in. Nah, yeah. And we'll hack. Kill them off, because Elaney is the, the hard one to deal with. And mind control the human. So the rock's gonna slowly make its way up there. Nope. Nope. I was gonna shoot them with all of my weapons, but I forgot because my one crew is mind controlled, they're not gonna go to the med bay. And we don't want that. And there are cloakings back up completely in time. Because we upgraded sensors too, we can actually now see inside their ship. Are they both going to the med bay? Please both be going to the med bay. The rock might escape. Nope. All right, now we get to choose what kind of crew member we want. Uh, we haven't picked up a rock yet, so let's pick up a rock, I guess, just to have one if you want one. Um, I would probably actually take a Mantis in this situation because we're almost done with the sector and Mantis are better for dealing with borders. Again, let's just make the right decision. Let's take the Mantis. If this was early on in the game, uh, Rock Man for more blue options, but we'll just go with Mantis. Because, like, my only potential concern is, like, borders. Let's go ahead and upgrade our battery just so we can just use all the power from it. All right, we, we could leave. I did the sector wrong because I actually want to do a dive to showcase a dive why we would want some. So, like, we could just leave now. Again, we could have got a jump. But we can pick up one, two, three beacons before the dive. And that's pretty valuable. Do we need them? No. We can win with what we have. But still, we can pick up extra beacons here. All right. So we can't see the inside of the ship. But again, we can see what kind of stuff they have. Try to be a hero. So we have the burst one. We have a charge one. We have a burst two. We see that they have no cloaking or anything. They have no medbay. Let's go ahead and try to be a hero here. Is that Slug just going to sit there and die from asphyxiation? That's tragic. Now, this is 11 seconds, and this is 22 seconds, so we'll just be able to time it. I cannot mind control the Slug. Can't do it. It'll resist. See? Nothing happens. I can mind control this room. The Slug resists, and the Lanny goes. Okay, they fired this thing. What do we want? We can cloak. And then, so a better swipe really is this. That's six damage, plus it hits the uh, systems we want to hit, like piloting and such. Nope, that's a, not a very good reward. I don't need fuel. We'll get ten fuel when we jump to the final sector, so... Fifty-five bucks, and hey, four hole repaired. All right, well, we got repairs too, but that's fine. Ah, it's not really a problem. Uh, try using them to delay the rebels. Oof, what are you hacking? Mid bay. Okay, that's fine. Remember that thing we did before? Let's just keep. We can try it again. Oh, they hacked my mind control. 
totally different. No, can't do that. I was impatient. So I assume because it hacked here, but because there's no direct line to it, they hit my MC. Hmm. That's okay. That's okay. So you see how Smith here has 115 health? That's because it's a level two mind control. Yeah, you're like, oh, of course it is, because we can see this. But mind control adds 15 health every level it is above level one. So this lets you know what kind of mind control you're dealing with, which means this is going to be mind control for a long time, and they hit really hard because they're a mantis. So we do want to distract him a little bit, move him back and forth. Um, normally, uh, actually, so the fun thing is when your mind control is hacked, even if it's level three, it only lasts the duration of the hack, which is never long enough for them to actually harm a system. Micro pause. So now we're going to cloak uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight projectiles. That's fun. Acceptance renders. Was that volley very good? Nope. Didn't even hit the uh, hacking here. So yeah, always, always delay your hacking until there's lands so that you know what's actually happening. Thought it was fine. Apparently not. Intruders. Three of them. All right. So we got three borders on our ship. Um, we have quite a few options really to deal with them. I mean, we can just send in our two mantis and a human. They'll get dealt with. Uh, but we can also just mind control and back out. <laughs> And then we're going to uh, vent. So the best way to vent is uh, open up as many outside doors as possible. That's what vents fast. And then it's going to pour into the adjacent rooms. Now, the further away you are from these doors, the longer it takes to drain the O2. But we can speed it up by also draining the oxygen from here. Okay, that way runs. It's fine. They're just chilling here in the O2. And with the upgraded doors, what they are. It's... Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let this one in. So they keep trying to like join each of the, the crewmates. So bunch of, just gotta keep an eye on this. You don't want your own crew to suffocate. <laughs> Again, we could easily just go in, finish them off if you were so inclined. But sometimes you can just use the O2. Open up the interior doors after we close all the exterior doors. Level 2 oxygen. Again, I'm going to put you here, I guess. I don't probably care at least about. All right. Okay, now we're going to dive. So I'm pretty sure if we dive in the exit beacon, there's no ASB we even have to worry about. Let's see. No, all right, so yeah, so we're facing this elite fighter. So these fights can be pretty nasty. Uh, we got three shields, three, six, seven power and weapons, three, four, five, six crew. That's pretty up there. Um, but you just treat it like any other fight. Or what we could do, so let's say like, oh my gosh, our weapons aren't good enough to deal with this. What we could do is we hack their weapons, we cloak when it's dangerous, and then we just get out. That's totally fine. Like, this is this is acceptable. Like I said, we can win this fight, no problem, but kind of like show you what the, uh, the running option is. One shot is okay. We're gonna let the second one fire. Even though, again, we're completely safe and we just hack it. We're just buying time for our FTL to charge. I mean, we can wait for their weapons to charge a little bit. So let's say this weapon fires here. No, oh, gotta make sure this is uh, full. Cloak it. And now, while we're cloaked, their weapons aren't charging, and our hacking's coming off a of cooldown. And now we can just hack their weapons. 
pretty nice little strategy. And see, we could easily jump away. Easily, easily jump away. But what happens if we kill them? Killing the uh, elite ships on a dive results in one fuel every time. No matter how you kill them, unless you have no fuel, then I think you get like two or three. So even though the ship looks super nasty, it's uh, it's to prevent you from being soft lock if you get stuck behind dives, that you at least get one fuel 100% of the time. So yeah, you don't normally want to fight them, but uh, again, it's best just to keep a level head. Actually, it's just better to plan your sectors out so it's safe. Anyways, all right, so last stand, bum, bum, bum. We also get 10 repairs, but we're full on hull, so we don't get to see that. All right, so there are three repair beacons. Unfortunately, they can get overtaken. These points are just overtaken at random. So if you don't have a ship that's like 100% safe, which generally means if it doesn't have like cloaking and hacking, uh, you just try to get to the base as soon as you possibly can. Because each time is just like bring on a potential extra damage and you want to go to the flagship fight with as much health as possible. There is a store in Sector 8. There is one. I mean, it could be here. You'll never see it. So... Um, let's start by... Okay, okay, let's just take a repair, just show what a repair station looks like. Alright, yeah, they also give you, like, 15 hull repair. It's a, it's a sizable amount of hull repair. And, yeah, four to five of the resources, plus a little bit of extra money. So, don't need to go to e another one. Uh, A, the civilian ship. Chances of rewards here four shots plus a beam weapon so all their shots have to land in time with this for us to take damage here could happen also that's a defense too so against defense twos i'm just like fire the shots like if you spread your volley out too much to try and get perfect timings on them often it'll be able to hit one or two more projectiles it's not really what you want no, my volley was way too early. All right, well, anyways, uh, we'll do this swipe. It's good enough, takes out their piloting. Let's now pay attention to the number of shots that land. Okay, we got one dodge, so we're completely safe. I'm gonna drop this down. This is super min maxi, don't do this, but because I already know one shot's missing, three more shots incoming. Get a little bit of training. So the nice thing about having the weapons that we do is like... That's not a great swipe. As we're really not, you know, like a lot of several fights, we're not using cloaking or we're not using hacking, um, which is kind of ideal. So it's not like, oh, of course you're winning because you just have the best weapons and you got the systems. I mean, we plan to get the systems. That's what we did. But... Um, you don't always need them for all the fights in the late game, even if the stores aren't great. It helps. I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't. Continue. All right. Generally, I like to fight the flagship at the base. All right. Ion intruder. Gross. Oh, so this will actually be our first opportunity to show this. You can sneak a hacking drone past an anti-drone drone or a DD-1, DD-2. Let's show you what that looks like. All right, Iron Intruder into my hacking. Well, that's not ideal, but okay. So we're doing micro pauses until this fires. So there it just fired. Turn off the drone. You turn off our hacking. So you only want level one, so there's no power in it. That means our drone just stops moving. And this shot is trying to track it. So it actually sails past where our shot would be. Lands onto their shield system. We'll go ahead, hack shields. Again, I probably didn't need to do this at all, but we'll do it now because um, this thing's going to pop really soon.
I really just want their drones to be done, but we'll do the swipe as well. Let's go ahead, hit their weapons at least one time, and then we'll cloak this small bomb. Nice, so the ASB didn't go off, or the, uh, sorry, the ion intruder didn't go off, so we can just ignore it. Sometimes you can just ignore things. Seventy-eight bucks, and you'll see. Once the O2 sort of stabilizes, as long as we have level two oxygen, we still have O2 here, and eventually it'll actually go up and refill. Should. Maybe it's just neutralized. Whatever. Send him back. Ah, uh, we'll take one more. Why not? Fake registration. <gasps> drones. Uh, all right. So, like, you could hack the drones. The longer the hack is, the more likely the drones are to blow up. Uh, but it's still, like, con inconsistent. I wouldn't inherently bank on it. Normally, you should just, like, hack the weapons in those scenarios if you think the weapons are disgusting. Uh, mind control doesn't help us. If the AI hacks your mind control, um... Of an auto ship without any crew hacks your mind control. For some reason, it doesn't do anything. It's bugged. All right, hit a drone. Nice. Okay, pause. Get my swipe in. Oh, let's start with the piloting. All right, we got there. Not bad. I doubt it puts the drone back out. Oh. Uh, all right. No! I was going to try and shoot it, but I had already fired. Okay. Laser shots don't take them down. Aw, uh, too slow. Doesn't really matter. Just doing it for fun. Okay, 52 bucks. Let's go to the base. Alright, and here we'll wait. We could take this beacon and jump back in. That's fine, but uh, I excited to fight them at the base. So we have some scrap. Um, whatever. We can upgrade our engines. You can get Reddit engines. This is pretty wasteful. Uh, you'll notice that after level, they start being just like 25%. It's like the amount of, oh yeah, sorry, like that that's the two times, like the dodge percents, that's FTL charge times. So like it's 5%, 5% until you get to level five and then level six, it drops down to 3% evasion. So it's a lot of money for not a lot of benefits. Um, I'd rather have this at level three that has some uses that I could, um, I have. I'll get this up one notch just it's 60 bucks that's fine um it doesn't super matter uh if you want piloting if you want this if you upgrade sensors it doesn't really help for the flagship because it locks them out we can level three oxygen upgrade our med bay sure let's do this that's fine all right now we're just we're just waiting for the flagship And then I'll kind of go over what the flagship is, what it does. Okay, so this is it, the Rebel flagship. If we're able to destroy this monstrosity, the Federation fleet, they have a chance of surviving. No turning back. All right, hit the pause, continue. Okay, so they are going to cloak, which is a level two cloak, and hack at the start. This is a level three hack. Okay. Um, now, the flagship's primary weapons are these four weapons. This is an ion cannon, this is a laser, this fires missiles, and this is essentially a halberd beam. So three ions, three laser projectiles, uh, essentially a burst two. Uh, this fires, like I said, three missiles, and uh, this fires uh, what sent them out to a halberd beam. Now, they don't work like traditional weapons, like ours do. 
If you have a Federation ship unlocked, they work more like the artillery beam system. So what that means is each of these systems actually has three power in them. That's true for phase one and phase two, uh, but phase three, they go up to four power. And the more power in those systems that they have, the faster they fire, okay? So unless you completely damage, destroy the system, your those weapons are charging to fire. Uh, what's important to note is as long as you do one damage to this missile system, this one right here, the uh, the missiles are slowed down enough that you can consistently cloak them, like we were doing with the Flak Two. So, like a bare minimum cloak strategy is to do one damage to here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go with boarding strategies because we're, we don't have teleporter. All right, so let's let it roll out. See what system of ours they hack. Hacking doors. All right, this is completely inconsequential. So it's a really good idea... Normally, it's trying to kill off crew. I'm, I'm not too focused on that right now. It, it is very beneficial. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a shield tech here. Once this is close to halfway, go ahead and do that hack. Go ahead, use our battery, get our max dodge up. Why not? All right, here comes the missiles. We just want to do a level one cloak here. Just a level one. All right, let's stop. All right, so the shields are now completely down. Um, a goal should be to deal actually seven damage to this room. If we do seven damage to the crew member in this room, they die. And that means that for the next upcoming phases, we have to do three damage, then four damage, and we don't have to worry about the missile system. That's really powerful. So we'll go ahead, we'll do this very straightforward swipe, and all of our weapons into this room. And we'll mind control the pilot. So they do have level three piloting here. So the AI piloting will take over. We'll knock it down to level two because we'll beam through it. Now they only have level two engines in this phase. So actually it doesn't have that much dodge right now. There we go, crew dead, nice. So this room can't be fixed, never have to worry about it again. So now, um, depending on how long this fight goes, the ion becomes the next thing to worry about in terms of cloaking. Because it sets up both the laser weapon and the beam weapon. Okay, they're cloaking. That's fine. Another good reason to wait here at the uh, at the base or to engage the flagship early is let's say they hack something we don't like. Oh my gosh, they hack shields, they hack weapons. What do we do? We could just jump here. The base will be destroyed in three turns. We jump here, it'll be destroyed in two turns. We jump back, we still have one turn. And maybe they'll hack something else. Fortunately, didn't happen here. But that's always uh, another reason why, like, sometimes you don't just goof off and you get a bunch of money. And again, you did what we did. Got a lot of scrap on the way here. Not necessary. Three shots. We could take... No, we're fine. Okay. So it'd be really cool is if we do like seven damage to this room here. There's like two crew in there right now. Probably don't quite get there, but we'll try. Okay, but we got a fire. All right, we got a fire. Uh. Yeah, I don't think this is particularly advanced. I think you, if you got here, you can handle this. So we got a fire here. Let's drop this down to, we don't need a hack anymore. Not right now. Get our evasion up and let's, let's let it burn. Like I said, the ions are the danger. Go ahead, cloak the ions. Because it can't fix the missiles. What we might get here are crew kills. Don't want to overdo it. Uh, three flak plus one, so potentially one damage here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so yeah, we can fire dual bursts. 
So what's weird is that until the death animations come, until the death animations show up, those crew are actually still considered to be alive. Annoying, but yeah, so you want them to actually be dead dead. And now I can show you uh, the swipe on this. Oh, right, there's no room here. That, on hard mode, there is. So we could just do, like, that's an eight damage swipe, which is uh, a ton of damage. So it used to be that you do this one, because that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's only seven here, so it's fine. Eight damage is good. All right, it was great. So again, hit the missile room for seven. Maybe get some kills in the shield room, particularly if you have fire. Fire gets started, it's great. And now we wait. We actually want to sit here and wait. This helps to set up phase three of the flagship fight. So we're going to wait. We'll wait again. Uh, we have 46 bucks to spend. I mean, I guess we can. Uh, yeah, sensors. All right, so phase two. Now you'll note that, see, our sensors actually have this blue bar on them. So the game doesn't want you to know where all of its power is going. That's okay. And this portion of the ship has already fallen off. So we don't have to worry about doors. We don't have to worry about cloaking. We also don't have to worry about hacking. But now we have this drone control system that we have to deal with and a surge. So the surge is going to be a, I think it's five drones uh, on this mode. I can't remember exactly, it's been a while. Um, that's normally what we want to save the cloak for. So we're still kind of geared towards, you know, getting, uh, this weapon down, the missiles down first, and then going from there. So I like doing a shield hack here. Again, we can, and we could do the same bypass. Now, let's say you decide you don't like the bypass, even though I feel like it's intuitive with other aspects of the game design, and Matthew Davis has stated totally 100% okay that, again, it is intuitive to the game design. You could use your flak, wait, use your flak to fire, let that distract the defense too, or if you have a missile weapon, use that instead, and uh, try and sneak your hacking drone in while it's distracted. Now about this drone control system, the first, pa it's, it's a 10 power, sorry, it's an eight power system, but it actually operates a boarding drone at two power instead of the normal three, two offensive drones, a beam, a combat one, and then a, uh, this defense drone. The order is the defense is the boarding drone, then the two offensive drones, then the defense drone, uh, in terms of like taking those drones offline. All right, so we got a boarding drone. It's in our shields. All right, let's go ahead, open up all our doors. Let's take the backup battery, power our hacking. Go ahead, get that started. Get our oxygen to level two to mitigate the breach. And we're gonna go ahead, send our Mantis in, and we're gonna send our other two crew member in. And if you want, we can go ahead and uh, MC the uh, pilot here. No, oh, that's a little bit early, that's okay. Can do this exact same swipe. Nice. So we got the missile system completely offline. Now we have our cloak for the surge. Okay, this is warning us that the surge is coming. Okay, let's wait for it. And we cloak. Now again, if you fire your weapons, you get pulled out of cloak, so you're gonna have to be patient here. Not bad. If you don't really want to deal with a boarding drone, you could go ahead and target their drone system. I'm just going to go after their shield systems to try and end the fight as fast as possible. Okay. So, as far as fast as possible, eight damage swipe again. So, the flagship has 20 hull in phases one and three, but it's actually 22 in this phase. All right, it's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna send you there to tank the actual damage, you two in. This is still level two, everything's fine. All right, we're still safe. Pause when you need to. Pause when you don't need to, just pause. 
All right, 28 bucks. And then we're gonna heal up our crew. So we don't have to do anything too, too fancy in terms of setting up for the next part of the flagship fight because we have mind control. Okay, but now what we wanna do is we wanna jump into the flagship. All right, we jump here. And the reason we do this is if things are bad, there's too many borders, maybe there's some bad fires, like the missiles were really gross, we can jump back to the base and it's clean. We don't have to deal with any elite ships. It doesn't get overtaken ever. Um, ASBs, we don't even have to deal with the flagship. So what that does is we can then fight off those borders and then repair those systems and try to fight the flagship again. Um, this is known as kidnap strats. Like we, we killed off some crew at the first phase, so that was really good. But now, like I said, if, you, if you're concerned about dealing with boarding crew, this gives you that ability to like re-engage the flag with ship with severely less crew than they had before. All right, you're not certain now, so if we keep fighting, blah blah blah. All right, These, we're just gonna put auto fire on our weapons, and we'll give us just give yourself a, a micro pause because one of your crew is getting mind controlled. So they have a teleporter. They're just gonna keep boarding you, like they're gonna keep boarding you until nobody on their the ship can. So this crew member is never gonna join because it's separated, which is actually kind of beneficial uh, because if you kill off everybody, then the AI takes over, operates like an auto ship. So that means the auto ship is never gonna take over. And uh, actually it does lower their evasion a little bit because of that. Now they have level three mind control. That's okay. Level one mind control completely cancels it out. Uh, again, mind control really is like 99.9% .9 as effective as you need it to be at just level one. Super efficient that way. Uh, a reminder that these now have four power in them, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to shoot them and they're firing a little bit faster than we're used to. Engines now are level six. So it went levels two to level three to level six. So this ship has a lot of dodge. So it makes the fact that the super shield has 12 HP that much more annoying. This is a very long, protracted fight most of the time. All right, so we've mind control. Let's see where the two borders go. All right. Let's go ahead and send our Mantis in here. We're going to send our human and uh, our NG to help deal with it. Now, you want to keep an eye on this situation here in terms of where your mind control is. Because as soon as their mind control comes off cooldown, they're going to mind control a crew member. And what you don't really want to have happen is they mind control one of your crew members and you go to MC to cancel it. But because enemy crew members are in that same room, it MCs one of them. And so then you're MC one of their crew fighting your MC crew and it's a bit of a mess. So it's a good idea to try and like when this comes close to cooldown, just get everybody out of the room so you can cleanly micro the mind control and get back into it. Uh, hacking doesn't do anything here. All right, so here comes three missiles. Uh, I'm going to send those two crew there, there, back in, and back in. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to drop our shields. This isn't a guaranteed strategy. Sometimes it doesn't work, but a lot of times it does. Also, it looks like they're pretty well set up that the whole beam will be able to get the job done. All right, so we're going to do the fun little micro pauses. You can do space bar pauses if you want. All right, so we're about to get hit. This is the moment you want to do cloaking. So the surge from the flagship, it's inconsistent. It's inconsistent. So this closes the, the window between the missiles and the surge as much as possible. And we can get away with this because we have a level three cloak. I mean, it's actually possible a level two cloak lasts long enough, but not a guarantee. This comes closer, but still not a guarantee. If you only have a level one cloak, you kind of have to ask yourself a decision. Do you want to deal with the missiles or do you want to cloak the surge? Um, I think mathematically speaking, the missiles are more dangerous because they just ignore shields. So they have to, they don't have to high roll that much. They just have to high over your evasion to deal damage to you. And the surge has to, it's not like, Five of the third shots have to actually land to harm you. So anyways, we'll cloak here. 
And again, as long as we have 100% cloak, shields don't matter. Let's put our shields up. Yeah, we still have 100% touch. We can do this. All right, so we killed the boarders. Um, we don't have any crew on our ship. We still haven't even used battery. Let's just heal them up as fast as possible. Okay. Mind control, cancel that out. Heal them up. Get that back up to full. Oh, I was wrong. Okay, no, nope, they had three health. That's fine. Let's see if it lasts long enough. Long enough. All right. So we want to fire our weapons. You normally can consistently cloak the surge, like we did the flak, like with other, like how we did the missiles. If we do enough damage to them. Um, with a level one cloak. So firing our weapons ASAP, like after it goes over, like if you over cloaked it, can break your cloaking so that it helps retime it for you. All right, so where's the border coming in? I try, I, hopefully I don't have to fire these weapons yet. All right, we can just vent and ignore them. There we go. Let's go ahead and you could hack shields here. Or you could hack missiles, because we have so many shots. Like, we can easily overpower their defenses for the most part. Um, or you could do an evasion hack. Same thing. Like, we have so many shots that it's just going to land. Either way is fine. Just as soon as it lands. So we're going to be dealing with a missile surge. Now, see, look, we're fully charged. We haven't taken any damage from them. We haven't got the second missile volley. We could just jump back to the base. We could just jump back to the base. We don't have to, but we could. Here come the missiles. Pretty close. Okay, pre-fire. So that missile's hitting. We didn't get to see the miss mechanic. Hit us in the engines. That's a little bit gross. Let's send up two crew to help start repair that. That one's also hitting. Looks like that one's hitting as well. All right, so we got no dodge. Oh, no, we got one dodge. Uh, one of our crew has been at mind control. Mind control them back. Send our two bursts here. Now, if you wanted to, if you were like, I'm totally... Wow, they shot their own crew. Brutal. If you wanted to, we could have just mind control that pilot. Lower their evasion even more. But we'll do this swipe. Lower their dodge. All right, we got three damage in there to start all right the crew boarding crew is dead this one's going to get built into do repairs get our oxygen back online all right now we're going to go down to a level one cloak gonna wait for them to fire cloak and then just fire right after it Again, I want, I want to make sure this missile's offline. Nice. All right, so shields deal with this. Get MC'd. No, thank you. Good. Pick up the oxygen. Oh, we only need a level two hack to remove their shields. Now, we've done two swipes through this room, the level three piloting. Level two, so now it's level one, so they now have no evasion whatsoever. So that's pretty much death. I guess this is the best swipe. Six. There we go. All right, that's Kestrel. That's uh, a pretty clean run. Um, let's see out. Now let's go to the stats page because this is also an important thing. 41, 23 stats. All right. So we defeated 45 ships. We did 96 beacons. This is kind of where your numbers should be uh, after a run on easy mode, um, particularly the beacons explored. You want to hit in those high 90s, low 100s. If you're not hitting those numbers, you're not visiting enough beacons. I mean, there are always exceptions, of course, but n you really should be hitting that kind of number of jumps. Um, it might explain why you're like, wow, Crow ship seems so much more upgraded than mine. Yep, I'm hitting the jumps. I'm hitting the beacons. Um, getting 45 ships, that's probably around average, uh, slightly above average for me, uh, with no long range scanners. Makes sense. We also hit a couple of NG sectors. Uh, but yeah, that was a pretty straightforward run. FTL, 
hope you learned something from it. Uh, and good luck in your FTL runs.